Hi, welcome to the Brick Filmers Guild podcast, hosted by us, the Four Monkeys. On this podcast, we had the extreme pleasure of chatting with Canadian brick filmer Galen Johnson of Galen 5055. He is best known for his incredible video effects work and CGI on his brick films. His VFX work has been featured in some of Adam Nye's brick films that were made for Lego. Galen is currently finishing his studies in CGI. I would like to give an extra quick shout out to our wonderful Patreon supporters, Spugistu, Frame 5 Studios, Mind Game Studios, Dark Dragon Films, Forest Fire 101, Spencer Katz, Paganimation, and William Osborne. This podcast is sponsored by FX Home, the makers of HitFilm Pro, HitFilm Express, Emerge Pro, and more. HitFilm Express is a free video editing software with professional-grade VFX tools. It's a perfect fit for the average brick filmer's budget. HitFilm Pro is the top choice for video artists worldwide. In a single product, you get editing, compositing, titling, and 3D tools. HitFilm Pro is loaded with tons of professional features. Emerge Pro is a photo editing software that is powerful, easy to use, and a great replacement for what you are using now. Please head over to FX Home to find one of their products that will help you bring your brick films to life. If you would like to help support our podcast, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter. Get ad-free podcast at least a week before anyone else, plus other perks only available to our Patreon supporters. So, without further ado, here's our conversation with Galen. Hello, Galen. Thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, what a pleasure. I'm happy to be here. We're real happy to have you and happy for everyone to get to know you even more um, because we were thrilled to, to find you and hear about you through Adam Nyes, who we interviewed. Well, I knew about him beforehand. You did, yeah, but I, I bet a lot of people haven't because we just see the lack of views on some of your videos that have so much more. And uh, so anytime we can bring attention to somebody really talented such as yourself, we're happy to do that. I appreciate it. Thank you. I mm -hmm. um, also want to say you are now the first uh, COVID-19 Twilight Zone podcast. Yeah, <laughs> that's a thing, isn't it? That is a thing, yeah. yeah. How, how are you guys doing with all of this? Well, um, I'll be honest with you, it's it's pretty bad. Like, um, my wife and I are in theater. Um, that's kind of been what we've done our whole lives. And because you aren't allowed to meet en masse anymore... Uh, the jobs, that, especially the job my wife had, which is a great job, uh, is, has been postponed or canceled. So we are uh, we are just kind of waiting it out to see what happens with that. Um, I'm currently in school for 3D animation, and I'm in my last month. So it's kind of like, couldn't this have just happened a month later, right? Because I'm oh. I'm now having to homeschool, and and uh, we have a young son, so I'm I'm uh, I'm kind of split on all fronts, but. Uh, you know what? We're we're happy to have the the home time, which we weren't having as much. Um, so it's actually been a blessing that way. But uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely not easy right now. So are you going to be able to complete your schooling online then? I am. Uh, they've they've hooked us up with remote workstations because they supply a lot of the programs like Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter stuff like that. Um, if you don't have them or if you don't have a computer that can handle them, you couldn't do it. So they've hooked us up with remote um, workstations and uh, they've been gracious with some deadlines. So I think we're going to be okay. Well, that's Good. Awesome. Now, are you on any kind of lockdown? Well, they've definitely uh, shut down essential services. Uh, we don't go out much. Like we don't go out for, for uh, food other than groceries, but nothing official. Uh, no curfew. I was speaking to Adam actually and he said there was a, a curfew there. Is that right? There is. He's more in Atlanta proper, I think. Uh, but yeah, I'm. Sh I think there's a curfew. I wow. Know. I don't know. We haven't. We've barely left the house. Uh, well, I mean, we except to go to. We we dropped off some mail at the post office. That's that's. But extent. not even inside the post office. We drove outside. So yeah, we actually haven't been grocery shopping since March 12th. So we're getting low on food. Totally. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's a crazy time. But I mean, for I, we're we're here talking about brick films and you know, stop motion animation and, you know, to have all this free time for a lot of people, uh, 
is kind of a blessing. So I hope to see some really creative stuff come out of this. Yeah, yeah I'm there's sure you there's will. A, a there's about seven or eight different uh, events, brick filming type events or contests going on right now. Um, uh, so. I think a lot of you're going to see a lot of brick films over the next two or three months. Plus, Dave is going to be able to start another episode of Galactic Smuggler. So yeah, you have to look at. I mean, we're love. We love being at home anyway, and the fact that um, you know we get to be together, it is a blessing. We you know worked on our veggie garden, so you have to look for the good mm-hmm. and oh, find totally. the blessings in all of this. Um, we'll all get through it, but and I think a lot of us are going to come back to work really excited to go back to work because we miss it and <laughs> it's no longer work for a little while at least. You know, I'm in. I'm in a sort of a similar side of the business as you guys, not quite as much entertainment, but I do the technical uh, audiovisual um, for corporate events and things like that. And that just completely yeah. dropped off just like uh, theater business did. Right, you know, everything's canceled. You know, nobody's getting together anymore. And uh, I'm going to be excited to go back to work, that's for sure. For sure. For sure. But uh, spe- yeah. speaking of brick filming, you know, um, let's, uh, let's well, dive we'll, into that. We'll start at the, uh, <laughs> start well, at the well, actually, we, I, we haven't even said where he's from. You are Canadian. That's right. You're actually our fifth Canadian podcast, which is really cool. That's awesome. I mean, I've, I've heard of, I've, I've tried to listen to them all. Um, but I've definitely listened to a few Canadians and you know, you, you don't like to think there's any difference, but it's always kind of cool to hear, well, especially, you know, if they're from Toronto where I'm from. So yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it Akash's Akash's from? Uh, lives, uh, I think, from Toronto, lives there. And uh, Paul Hollingsworth's from there, but lives in California now. Oh, cool. And uh, one of them's French-Canadian, uh, uh, Mark uh, Crone. Oh, cool. So, uh, but, uh, yeah. And then we had uh, Jared Jacobs, Jared who's Jacobs. also he's, from... He's kind of a, a Western-Canadian. Now so he lives in Idaho. Lives in Idaho. Nice. So yeah. do you speak um, any other languages? Uh, no, they... The curriculum here, they start you as, like, I don't know, if you have eight classes a day, you kind of have one of them as French uh, up until high school. Um, I actually went to a French immersion high school, or no, pre-high school, whatever 7-8 is mm-hmm. there, um, because of the band program. My, my school I went to was a rural school, and when it came to 7-8, I decided to do this French immersion program uh, to play trombone. I wanted to, you know, play instruments. And so I got really good at the trombone, but I failed at school so bad because even math just seemed different in a different language you know what I mean so those were not uh great years uh, academically and I still can't speak French so I'm I'm uh and I also can't play trombone anymore I forgot oh, all that. Bummer. <laughs> I kind of wasted two years there but no they uh they definitely it's not mandatory but a, a lot of great cities uh in the French area um you know everyone kind of is bilingual mostly but uh you do kind of wish you spoke the language when you're there, for sure. Well, uh, from from the, from the notes I've taken here, you do kind of have another language that you have, which is uh, music. Um, what what instruments do you play? And and but now that you don't play the trombone, I think I saw you playing drums in uh, one video. That's right. I I am a, a drummer. Um, my wife is a great singer, and and you know, whenever we're in a place like we are now, which is called Stratford, Ontario, it's just north of Toronto. Um, you're here for about nine months when you work here. And so, you know, if anyone else plays instruments, we start little bands and, and kind of play the local bar scene. So that's always a good outlet to, uh, to get the music thing going on. Yeah, it was, it was neat to watch you guys. You're both so very talented being in theater and singing and playing instruments. And, uh, so you'll probably have to help us pronounce, especially the first one we're going to talk about. Well, Les Mis. All right. Les Mis. Yeah, you could be just lazy and say Les Mis, your first oh, one, 2006. Les Miserables. Absolutely. Les Mis, or, uh, yeah, The Miserables in, in, in English. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the first video I ever made, like, I guess not made, but uh, but published. published. That came out, I guess that was made just before YouTube. I even knew about YouTube, and so... Um, my, it's on my wife's channel, which is kind of a bummer because it has like 500,000 views or something oh now, but it's uh, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> like it's, it's not very good. Um, but I just posted it up there and it kind of made the rounds, especially in the theater scene. And I think it made another, uh, it had another life when the oh. Les Mis movie came out and it was done on the Lego Movie Maker camera. Okay. And I think I just connected it to my, I think my dad gave me his secondhand laptop. This was around maybe end of high school maybe first year of college for me um and yeah i i remember 
the computer could barely handle the software and wow. it couldn't, you know, it was so slow going and I didn't know what I was doing as far as frame rates. Um, and that's actually something I'll talk about for a while. It like, it took me a long time to catch on to frame rates. And so I would just load pictures into, I guess it was movie maker, maybe mm-hmm. windows movie maker. And just, you know, it would import a picture at a second, a picture or something or mm-hmm. six seconds a picture. So you'd have to squeeze down each picture. You know, I, I think that movie, I don't know. Is it two minutes? Maybe I like so. Calculate the amount of frames you have to squeeze down, and then uh, yeah. So it that was a, that was kind of a learning process, but it definitely uh, sparked me. You know, seeing seeing the Lego and seeing the set that I had built come to life. So that was the whole jumping off point for sure. What um, I mean, was there something that you saw that made you want to get into Lego? Well, I'd always played with Lego. Like I have a lot, and uh, at that point, it was only in my parents' house, which is in. Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is like right on top of Fargo. It's like middle of Canada. Mm-hmm. And so um, I went to school at West. Uh, so anytime I'd come home for, you know, Christmas or whatever, I would, you know, try to get one of these movies made. Um, but I've always loved Lego. And so I think I've heard a few people now talk about the old uh, camcorder stop motion thing, like where you, you had the big camcorder, you press the red button once and then press it again to stop it. And sometimes the frames are like a second long or they're, or mm-hmm. like they don't show up cause you press it too fast or <laughs> you forget to pr- stop it. So it like, it plays an actual movie. So that's kind of how I started to learn, you know, long before I was making movies, but I have a lot of like stuffed animal, you know, videos and stuff when I was like six or seven. Oh, that would be cute to see. So you're doing yeah, a sort of I, little stop motions with stop uh, with a camcorder and uh, stuffed animals. Yeah, like, okay. n- you know, n- no uh, no acting, no anything, just basically the technique of getting, you know, the animal to go from here to here to there in stop motion form, okay. like, without seeing my hands or anything. Okay, well, I'm, de- I'm definitely guilty of that as well. I was a little older when I uh, played around with it, but, uh, yeah, and I think uh, uh, William Osborne, I think he has some video- uh, videos like that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so what audio started. did you use for your Lego Lame Is? I believe that's... Was the it cast years? recording because we had I think we had the CD like I don't think there was a way to rip music from the internet yet so I think that's the CD and I I would cut together you know the 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 cut that I wanted basically that's awesome um, yeah yeah cool. so check that out I I don't know I guess you can put a link to it but uh, it's it's definitely the greatest uh, contrast between what I'm doing now for sure. Yeah. Everybody, I'll have all of your links, and uh, like I said, we spent. Dave, Dave had already watched all of your videos, but I wanted to watch them all before our podcast. So, so enjoyable. Enjoyed it, watching every single one of them for different reasons, and fun watching you grow. And um, yeah, so this is really cool. So, would oh, you say that probably your most of your videos? I think there's like five or six between 2006 and nine were just sort of uh, home from college uh, vids, brick films you made. Um. I'm trying to think. When was the 2006 ones? Do you have a title? Like yes, the you Lord got, of the you got Les Mis in six, and it goes all the way up to Camelot in 2009. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, those are exactly that. So uh, so that would be you know going home to visit my parents, trying to you know get something done, and all those videos, everything up to if you're looking at my video, you know if anyone out there is looking at my video log or whatever, it's up until Lord of the Rings. Everything up to then is uh, blind. So obviously I had. Like I said, I had no idea about frame rates. I had no idea about an onion skinning or, or, you know, anything like that. So I'd basically take a picture, get in there, move it as little as possible or as, or as you know, as close as I thought it was. And then I'd get so frustrated about, like, you know, why is there a light flicker on this one shot? Or why is it, like, why does my walk cycle look like he's, you know, bobbing for apples there? So <laughs> I just didn't get it. You know, I didn't know anything that I was doing. So... You can definitely see that, and uh, because I was only getting to do this, you know, a couple times a year, the the progression isn't isn't that huge. Well, one of the standouts in there was the uh, the city gym takedown. Um, right. That kind of was that a, a big standout during that time. It was one of your later ones. Um, I liked some of the uh, the effects you did in there, um, uh, like the when they would say some words or whatever it had like a cartoon almost anime type effect of you know uh you added that you know the bubble words and stuff i thought that was pretty cool yeah i gave it that uh, cartoon feel which was really neat 
Yeah, I like that too. I had I was uh, doing a show at that point, and I remember um, having some good voice actors r- around me. So we we recorded the voices, and I just I didn't know how to animate to the sound. Like I, I didn't know how to uh, count out the sound. So mm-hmm. instead of like trying to animate it blindly to the sound, I just had the the frame freeze whenever someone spoke. So that was kind of a workaround to cheat, but uh, it ended up looking kind of cool. Yeah, it really did. I excellent, liked it a excellent. lot. Another uh, you know, uh, uh, effect that I liked uh, um, that popped out in there um, was uh, when one of the, the lady character comes in and unzips her, her jacket. You did a, a body replacement there that worked really well. Totally. Totally like that one. And the other one you liked I was... I like the treadmill. Well, the whole treadmill effect, but then at the end when she fell off the treadmill at the end, that was pretty... <laughs> it was really it was really well done. Oh, and I also liked it when he was walking up the rock wall. I mean, just so many really cool things. The story was really good. So that's... Excuse me, you're a really good storyteller, and uh, okay. your your sets are really beautiful, um, highly detailed, and you, you just notice all these cute little things. Um, just oh. really well done. Even the old ones are every one of them is just so well done. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, that one uh, that one's funny. Like I, they call me, uh, you know, hopefully affectionately, the the Michael Bay of of brick films. Like I <laughs> obviously love love explosions, and I'm a huge culprit of filming before I have any script or any idea of what I'm going to do. Like I just, you know, build something and start taking frames. And so that's, that's a bad one where I got to the end and I was like, what am I, how does this end? What am I doing? And I also ran out of time. Like I said, I I was at my parents and I had to leave soon. So the ending uh, suffers for sure, but uh, definitely, definitely trying to, you know, plan out things a bit more now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm guilty of that sometimes. Sometimes I'll I'll have a thorough script and then sometimes it's all right. uh, We're just going to have a little battle here with some Lego Star Wars. (laughs) Sometimes those are the best, though. It's just, you know, that's what I've been doing. My last two projects is just uh, just playing around and not not even really having a, um, a, a game plan except, you know, two figures fighting. Totally. And you've been playing around with some effects lately, eh? Yeah, yeah, we, um, I mean, I, I had uh, After Effects um, up till sort of recently, and I kind of dabbled a little there, but we recently uh, worked a partnership with um, uh, FX, F- Home. FX Home, and we've been using their uh, their product, and uh, I've been playing around a lot now that it has the lightsaber effect, so I haven't really, I you know, I didn't do lightsaber effects until just this last year <laughs> right. and I've been, you know, I've been what brick filming since what, 2007 or eight. So, yeah. um, I, I, cause I don't, I, you know, I think I did one in after effects. I put a plug into after effects. So I did one yeah. test and that was maybe a year and a half ago. Um, but we, we've switched over to hit film pro and, um, I kind of, I, the software is a lot more affordable and, uh, easy to use. it's just as easy, you know, if you, if you know, after effects, you can, you can definitely, Make the, switch. Make, make the switch pretty easy oh cool i'll check it out i haven't uh, looked into that much but uh, i'm definitely an after effects guy as it's mm-hmm. pretty, i think it's pretty obvious but yeah uh, yeah, yeah the, the lightsabers can be tricky the way their their uh, motion blur works mm-hmm. you, sometimes you have to do it backwards to make sure the the motion blur and sometimes like you can't just line it up with the with the blade itself you have to line it up where the motion blur will work right so mm-hmm. it can be it can be a challenge mm-hmm one of the things I did notice on when I was doing some of my uh, lightsaber effects recently is uh, when I was when the like a blue and a red or maybe it was a green and a red lightsaber kind of crossed over each other, it sort of made a yellow instead of letting whatever uh, sword was on top stand out oh. as much. But that might just be me not knowing how to use the software well. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I, I I couldn't tell you. Maybe a um, yeah. I don't know. Interesting. But, but, yeah, you should give it a try. You try the um because they have well, the free. Well, the free one does not have the lightsaber, so you'd have to um, you'd have to get a plug in for the free one or the pay for one. And you know, if you're already using uh, After Effects, you know, that's kind of your your call there. But you it's know, not that's, like you need any help at all. <laughs> the only the bad I, part about After Effects is it's just it's a yearly charge unless you've uh, got some sort of legacy sort of uh, version of it that doesn't charge you every year. For sure, if I wasn't using it. You know, almost every day I, I would be hesitant for sure. Um, the only the only real experience I have with the lightsaber, uh, other than Adam's recent stuff, is uh, I made I made like a really cool to me lightsaber battle. Um, it was on the whole thing was on uh, what are they called a lazy Susan like cake display thing, mm-hmm. so the whole set could rotate, and I had a, a measuring tape around the lazy Susan, um, so you could measure 
every frame was I think one millimeter. And so it all, it all turned and it was like super cool. And I had them, uh, I took a page from, uh, from brotherhood workshop there and, and made them fight on clay so it could move better. But again, I didn't start thinking about it until after I'd started filming. So I could never finish, <laughs> I could never finish it. Like I had no ending. Mm -hmm. And, uh, at that point, Instagram wasn't a thing. So it was like, do I really want to put this on YouTube with no ending? And so I just kind of scrapped it. So uh -huh. you can get, actually see a, a quick uh, shot of it in my like YouTube trailer. Okay. But I should probably brush that off and try to finish it sometime. Yeah. But uh, if you have it on Instagram, yeah, we didn't actually look through the mm -hmm. Instagram. We'll look through that because it's always fun to see things that people put on there. We're not yeah. very good about that, but most everyone oh, me, else is. Me neither. My, my whole Instagram was uh, run by my wife who was telling me, you gotta, you gotta have Instagram and everything. So she would, she would take candid pictures and she would try to post stuff for me. And finally I took it over for myself, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely bad with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, if you release, um, like the stop motion Lego, anytime we do it, it, it gets like amazing response there, probably more so than on, um, YouTube these yeah. days. So yeah, it's definitely, that's kind of where it's definitely is worth right it now. to put them on there. Totally. Yeah. A lot of people have gotten big because of, uh, Instagram. Uh, we just haven't, figured out the true magic of it yet but uh and plus we're lazy yeah that right well you know what just just today since we're talking about it, i just got a, a private message on instagram about a collaboration so it's definitely a, pl a place that can be um lots of opportunities there mm -hmm. for sure. definitely mm -hmm. cool mm -hmm. You want to go back and yeah, we'll go. We'll go back a little bit. Yeah, I, we uh, got off track. There. Yeah, yeah all, hey, we love off track. Hey, we, we jump around all the time. It's fun. <laughs> <All right. laughs> cool. Um, but you uh, you did do a little experimentation with some Mega Bloks pirates. Uh, they uh, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, really yep. cool. It was a, it was a lightsaber fight, I believe. Um, you just did you draw all that in with like uh, paint or? Exactly, Microsoft Paint. It was uh, painstaking. Now. That was out of necessity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of a purist as far as Lego goes, but but that was I was on a contract somewhere. I didn't have any Lego, but I was I had a lot of time on my hands, so I bought that that set that yeah. came out. I again, you, it's really obvious. The full video is on my wife's account, mm -hmm. um, and the lightsaber test is I think the first video I ever posted. But it's it's really bad as far as uh, you know, animating blindly, and because those characters are so much more expressive mm -hmm. you have to be you know you, you have to animate them better basically <laughs> like lego has you know with only four or five joints on a on a figure um you can get away with a lot mm -hmm. but i found those those characters if you don't know if you know if you can't see the frame before or after they there can be some huge mistakes in there but it was uh it was a labor of love yeah. for sure i love the uh, the key flip i thought that was a cool effect yeah, you know what? None of my effects at that time were painted out, so that is, I think, the key is attached to like a black uh, twist tie or something. Yeah, you could you couldn't hardly see it or couldn't see cool. it, so it looked right. Looked right. Trust me when I tell you, none of your work is bad. Not even the <laughs> beginning one. None of them are bad. I'll take They're that. all Thanks. enjoyable, and they all have really, um, really sweet qualities about them. But mm -hmm. they're really good. Oh, cheers. Cool. Cool. Um, the Lego Sweeney Todd mm -hmm. is that uh, that's from uh, I guess the movie or a soundtrack from a musical. I you know what that was one of the things where I saw the movie you know the, the Johnny Depp one that came mm -hmm. out years ago and uh, I saw it with my parents I was at my parents' house and I came home and I built the set and I started filming and like I just you know was inspired by that one um, yeah and that took a long time and and. Again, my lack of knowledge, I keep harking back to this, but like the things I would have told myself at the time, like I would I would animate scenes of that while watching TV. And so like the TV is obviously, you know, flickering onto the set and changing the the lighting every frame and all kinds of silly mistakes. But I love that movie. And, and uh, it's it's long at the time. I remember trying to load it and YouTube wouldn't let you load things over 10 minutes. And it's I think it's 10, 20 or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but when I, the same thing with the paint, I had to animate all the blood by hand without any uh, onion skinning. So I was just guessing what the frame before was and, and everything. And it came out pretty good. And that mm -hmm. was what inspired me to do um, the lightsaber test or whatever. Okay. But uh, if you watch Sweeney Todd, you like it's it's dated for sure. But if you watch it like with the with the lights off and just like watch it full screen, I get like 
goosebumps sometimes. I think mm-hmm. I think that's one of my my favorite ones. Yeah, the boat on the water at the beginning was really cool. Well, he's talking it about the real a, movie. Oh no, I'm talking about. I, well, I, I, I'm, I'm have, talking. I'm talking I about the Lego movie. It. Like if, if you watch, if you watch, if I watch my Lego movie, that that Sweeney Todd, like in the dark, full screen, I, I still get goosebumps. Oh, about okay, it. okay. So it was yours? Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. Um, have you seen it? The movie? I haven't seen the movie. I haven't seen the movie either. So, no, so I, you, I yours Johnny is the Depp only movies. one that we've seen. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I hang out with theater people. There's a lot of uh, mixed reviews. A lot of people don't like it because they changed it from the the stage play. But it's a good movie, I think. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I mean, it's Johnny Depp, so you know, right? Don't need to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, the, 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 really the boat at the boat at the beginning, I thought was really cool. I thought it really uh, captured uh, the motion there, and the um, you know, you did a heavy green screening in that. Was that with um, what program was doing the green screening? So I got this program. I paid for it. Uh, first thing I've ever like first software I ever paid for, other than the Lego Movie Maker thing. It was called oh, what was it called? Uh, Magics, like mm-hmm. with an X, M I M A G I X, Magics Movie Maker, and it was mostly. Um, I guess it was like Microsoft Movie Maker, but it also had this effects tab. And so one of them was keying. And mm-hmm. so it was the first time I'd ever tried it. I didn't do any tests before I did that. And I actually got so lucky on that shot. Um, if you haven't seen it, you won't know what I'm talking about. But I, I yeah, I, I animated the boat um, basically with a rolling pin at its center so that it would, you know, look like waves. But every time the boat went back, it would cast a shadow on the green screen that oh. I had. But when I keyed it out, it looks like waves are splashing. Oh, okay. So it's this is happy mistake that that ended up working for me. Oh wow, yeah, because the splashing was really cool. Yeah, that was not intended, but it's just wow. because. Wow. Gotta the, love those uh, happy accidents. Yeah, the glare of the of the screen wouldn't allow a key, so it, yeah. it kind of looked cool, <laughs> even without me wanting it to. Wow, yeah, Bob Ross, happy accident. Yeah, there we go. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we'll we'll go into this a little bit more later, but that is one of uh, you know I kind of try to identify superpowers. Uh, that people have for for brick filming and what whatever um, your ability to animate later on in front of a green screen is spectacular. Oh, thanks. Because it's it's so difficult to animate Lego because they're so shiny. It's like a bunch of little mirrors. Yeah, and seriously. You, you you reflect the green, and then now now you've keyed out a piece of your Lego, and and however you did it you later on have truly figured out uh how to animate uh a moving object in front of a green screen which is it's applause for me for sure oh cheers yeah and and even if your green screen's perfect because they're yellow part of the key gets taken from the yellow so yeah i, I hear you it's been a process for sure and do you always use green or uh well what i <laughs> I actually do have a green screen now, like a cloth one. But uh, before, I would just buy um, that neon bristle board you get at a, a dollar store, mm-hmm. and the green one worked better than the blue. So that's the only way uh, I kind of stuck with green. But I have used blue in the past. So yeah, there's definitely there's definitely cases where it's better. And I actually didn't know until I saw one of uh, Brotherhood workshops behind the scenes that you could use any color, mm-hmm. and that's been a big enlightening thing for me. But uh, I thought it had to be green or blue for some reason. But uh, green is definitely the go-to for sure. Mm. See, behind the scenes are so um, wonderful for people because so many people get to learn from it, and uh, I love it when people do that. I agree. Again, also with the podcast as well, getting to hear little you know tricks of the trade um, is also very helpful. It's kind of why we started doing it. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> for that's, selfish that's, reasons. That's to- I was just thinking that listening the other day. I was like, you guys between you must have the most information of anyone because you've <laughs> listened to so many people give their secrets away. So, Yeah, well, uh, I, it was actually my full-time job from 2014 to 16, and I, I realized that I needed to learn a lot just to, to keep doing what I was uh, doing to, to progress right. my, 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 my uh, craft. So I was like, hey, uh, let's, let's make a podcast, see if we can uh, get some information out of people and learn. <laughs> For sure. Plus make friends. Yeah, that's really been the best part. It's oh, nice totally, to get totally. to know everybody. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you, uh, in 2009, you uh, kind of make sort of your last brick film, it seems like, for a few years. It was Camelot. Uh, did a wonderful job with all the knife play and sword play in it. And uh, I loved your addition of pop rock music. Yeah. Uh, 
at certain parts. Um, yeah, that made me laugh. It was I loved kind of it. cool. Is and, and speaking of uh, like uh, musical theater uh, music, have you used any music from one of your uh, productions in a brick film? Yeah, earlier ones. Was it earlier? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of um, rules about that, but uh, Camelot was made um, while I was doing the show Camelot, and we we actually were touring the United States. So I've 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 been all over the states uh, doing Camelot. <laughs> I don't know if anyone out there's saw it at that time but um i made that mostly just for the cast it's kind of an inside joke Mm -hmm. um and so i made it we had a layover i think it was a week and so i went home to winnipeg that time and you know bumped out those shots like a lot of those shots are pretty uh pretty sparse as far as animation goes but i got the footage and then i uh, i edited it all together but yeah that's us that's our recording of the show and then i added uh my own drum beats to it Mm -hmm. so the show isn't that kind of up tempo poppy i i just kind of recorded drums over top wow that's cool yeah it makes it that much more special too yeah and it's definitely uh you know a niche thing and it's it's very inside jokey but i think some people appreciate it like it has it has almost six thousand views and you get a lot of comments from musical theater people being like oh i was waiting for this and stuff so mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there's always it, that niche right it had a lot to love about it whether you are into camelot or, or not um you know all the the knife and the sword effects was really really cool cool thanks mm-hmm. and then you uh you kind of take a, a little bit of a break i'm assuming just life kind of caught up with you there but you didn't you don't release another uh brick film until 2012 yeah you, uh the battle of helms deep and uh, yes so did... that was uh that was right boy that was that was like the year right so um like I said, all my Lego was in Winnipeg at my parents' house, and we we move around a lot for work, so we just I you know I have a lot, and I didn't want to bring it down, and it just kind of yeah became a thing that I used to do. And then that year, uh, the Lord of the Rings Lego came out, and obviously the Helm's Deep set was was a big one, and I think I was you know driving home from something, and I was I pulled into a Toys R Us and ended up just picking it up. And I had a camcorder at the time, and I had the cables to connect it to my computer. And so I could, uh, for the first time, I could actually just, you know, shoot the the images straight into, uh, I think I was using, I don't know if I had Premiere yet, I think it was still Magix. And so I was was pumping the the images straight into that finally. And I... uh, I think halfway through, I ended up purchasing Dragon Frame because, again, I wasn't using onion skinning and I was having so much trouble with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that was also the first one I used Dragon Frame for. Okay. Um, and After Effects, if, I, if I'm if i recalling as well. Okay. So that was kind of the big year. It went from nothing to this is what I'm going to start doing for a while. And was that like a HD camcorder? No. I, I think it was a pretty, pretty decent image. You wouldn't want to zoom in too much. Like, I think there's a lot of, uh, I don't know what they're called, but dots you know, pixelated Burn dots pixels, on it. Yeah. Definitely not an HDRI, but uh, it worked. It did the job. Actually, you know what? You can see the camera at the very. If you start the video, there's like a behind the scenes footage of the of the of the uh, set, and you can see the camera there. I actually have a note about that. I love the way you entered uh, started your video off, where it's like, okay, this is this brick filming set, and it's zooming into the camera uh, um, the display, set. and then it goes straight to the stop motion. Yeah, that was like a last minute, uh, last minute change there, and I, I, I'm happy with it too. Yeah, yeah. really cool effect. Yeah, I, I dug that. Was that? No. Yeah, those are right at the right at the very beginning. That's okay. where I want to start. I feel like I missed an opportunity with you being in theater because we always um, start at the very beginning of of people's career, and mm. you know, I always think of um, Julie Andrews and the Do Re Mi song and the Sound of Music, and I'm like, wow, you're the perfect person to actually sing that part <laughs> <laughs> totally. one of my favorite movies oh yeah for sure um th- that mo- that uh, that time was also i think that was just before the lego movie came out um no maybe maybe a year or two earlier mm-hmm. uh but that was kind of like the same year that uh brotherhood workshop jumped on the scene mm-hmm. like i had i had always been a fan of other people like there were some great videos at the time but I remember doing this, like I was almost done. I think I was doing the After Effects part. And I ended up just like Googling, I don't know, Lego, Lord of the Rings or something. And his video, his first video of the orcs, like with Aragorn fighting the orcs and everything came out. And I was just like, 
what? <laughs> like, why? Why did you have to bring this out now? I was just about <laughs> to drop my video, and, and of course you had to drop that one. So uh, that was a big, like, I don't know, that was just a big time for brick filming in general. Like, there was a lot of people catching on to it, and it was it was becoming more popular. Yeah, 2012 was a real good year. I think the, uh, one of um, uh, Kevin's uh, Lord of the Rings videos was in a contest that one, our, one, one of our videos was in. It was... Uh, Oh, do you remember the name of that contest from? Uh, Me, really? Oh, uh, it was it was, gosh, it As was it was, a, it was it was like it was like an interactive film festival down in L.A. and uh, okay. his, his was one of the ones in there, and we did a, a Grand Theft Auto trailer that was yeah. was at that. So it was. I've seen that. I love that one. Yeah, yeah, that that one I actually switched cameras Are you halfway. About the Machinima one. Machinima, yeah, it was the Machinima oh, thing. Yeah, it was okay. it was the Machinima actually uh, produced it. Okay, um, I remember uh, the the the. Uh, Whatever uh, it was the film festival, but yeah, I actually switched from like a uh, 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 webcam to a DSLR about halfway through that one. I yeah, wasn't okay. going to, but I was like, you know what, I am. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I, yeah. I really love that, and I love some of the humor. It, I mean, it really was uh, on your the Battle, uh, Battle Helms Deep. Deep. Yeah. Uh, it was like the cinematography was just is gorgeous in there and, and um uh, all the flying arrows and spears and you just know, made it seem so realistic so real. you just felt like you were right there in the battle and oh and, thanks yeah I, I definitely it, it it was intended to just be shot for shot like uh -huh. because uh yeah because I, I i didn't know anything about like using my own reference or anything or or i i didn't know anything about like, like you said, there's a huge gap there. So this is the first thing I've tried in years. Mm -hmm. And I just, well, I knew I needed to copy it. You know what I mean? I couldn't, mm -hmm. couldn't make it work without that. So it started as that. And then I take some liberties in the middle, of course. Um, but I had, I had been doing effects with magics. Like I said, there's, there's a lot of like basic stuff you can do, which you kind of see the full gambit in, in city gym takedown. Um, but then I ended up purchasing after effects for the World War II Lego video, which is the next one in line. Mm -hmm. And I was working on that much uh, much around the same time. I guess I was working on that before uh, Helm's Deep because I, that's where I got After Effects and I was, I was working on that, those things. And so I ended up putting the effects into Helm's Deep that made it kind of pop out, like you said. Like, like when all the ladders go up, that's only I only had one ladder, so I had to comp composite. Oh, wow, cool. Five five different ones going up at once and there's that scene with all the orcs coming forward and i think i only had six and so i had to composite them all in and obviously the fire and the rain and stuff so that after effects that was also the moment it was kind of like aha after effects is kind of my my thing right like I, i'm not i'm never going to get around just animating like uh, say michael hickox or you know those people that do simple just just uh, lego animation mm-hmm so that was kind of my my niche that I started to fill. Yeah. But there there's a lot. I mean that after the Battle for Helm's Deep you just watch that that's just what you call epic. Just <laughs> True, kick yeah, ass yeah. epic. True, Sorry. Yeah. I hope oh, your son's not around God, to hear that. that. <laughs> <laughs> to watch the language just in case he's around. <laughs> And I, yeah, I definitely love the humor with the pie. So the, Yeah, that, that was, was cute. Awesome. So, I like <laughs> the liberties you took. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and wasn't wasn't there like one of the um, arrows or spears that like went into somebody's head and like stuck in his head? Probably, uh, <laughs> maybe. I don't remember it. I'd have it to watch just, it. Again. I was just yeah, like, just... I watched. It, I was like, whoa! <laughs> Everything. It was just. It was so worth watching. Really, really love that. Yeah. Oh, cheers. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, and the explosion at the end with the the walls um, tumbling. Um, did and the you, smoke was it? Um, how, how did cotton you, balls, or was it just all? I'm thinking after that I think that effects. was After Effects with the smoke, but the uh, the walls uh, uh, tumbling or, or, or exploding into the air. Did how did you animate? Did you animate a Lego and it's composited in? Uh, you know what? Oh, sorry, you can hear the sound. I'm just looking at it, looking at the scene. Um, it is cotton balls oh. on the ah, base yes. on the base animation, and then so that was the goal was to do it with cotton balls, but. Yeah, so that wasn't working, so I ended up, because, you know, I don't, I didn't really know how to do that. I just kind of thought, oh, that'll work. So it looked kind of stupid, so I, I ended up compositing explosions. I ended up getting the, uh, whatever it is, the VFX package that has all those explosions in mm -hmm. it. And so I, I added those, and I added, um, like, there's a there's a, a long shot where you see all the, 
all the orcs also in the bottom mm-hmm. and that kind of sold the whole shot like I, I just took you know images of those orcs and like the fire flames and put those on top and that was that sold it for for some reason so it was just a bunch of little tricks that i was figuring out at the time well you figured them out yeah right <laughs> <laughs> well you mentioned your uh, your lego tank uh your world war ii thing um uh-huh. Uh, so you actually, I guess, did that one sort of before Battle of Helm's Deep, even though it comes afterwards. Um, yeah, I, I ended up taking a, a bit of Lego home with me, uh, mostly gray stuff, because Toy Sto- the Toy Story uh, figures came out, like those military figures. And so I, I just had this idea. Oh, and, and Brick Warriors also, I caught on to them. So I was like, got to do it. So <laughs> I, I just brought a bunch of gray Lego with me. And uh, I think over about a year, I tried to, you know, set up a set every once in a while. Cool. Well, I love the tank at the beginning. And did you make that yourself or did you uh, get a design online or is it a, a set? Uh, no, that's that's I think that's a me build. Um, just kind of with the pieces I had around. Wow. That was cool. I really like that. Um, and uh, the bazooka shot uh, was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and uh, again, like the effects were going to be really kind of bad and basic and so once i got after effects in there and started you know learning things about it and playing with it i the the movie really came to life like there's a lot of shots in there i try to do some some cool tricks and whatever but a lot of the shots are just the the minifigures static but because of all the action and all the stuff going on around it it looks like they're moving almost so there's a lot of a lot of cheats in there for sure yeah very but that cool. was the first movie that I, uh, again, I didn't have an ending for. And so I just uh, said, you know what? I've spent too much time on this. I'm going to put it up as is. So it ends on that explosion. But uh, I intended it to be kind of a big epic, but it, it kind of got cut short. Because yeah. it was kind of cute or funny that a lot of them were smiling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. They were a little smiley. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was still fun. Yeah, yeah it was Lego. Awesome. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> So moving on to oh, Lego, Lego Alien, Alien, Alien Hunter, Hunter. You, you you're still you're just progressing your 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 uh, special effects talents. Just keep moving forward here. Um, uh, just incredible uh, chroma keying in that. Um, and I think you mentioned oh, the, the yeah. face mask. Uh, I love remove. that because it, it like it turned red when it went down. It was just it was a really cool sweet effect having the face mask go down it was red and then when it went back up again it was just it looked really really awesome oh cool yeah so that i think i say it in the in the description but i i basically i knew i had work that day and i didn't have much to do and so i literally filmed that like right after breakfast like it took an hour maybe and it's really really uh you know basic animation but it took about i don't know however many months to, to finish it at the mm-hmm. time because I didn't I wasn't very fast then but uh, yeah it's, it's basically just a huge after effects extravaganza wow yeah yeah cool. that blows me away what you can do with that or yeah. what you can do with it yeah. Yeah, I think the, the coolest thing I ever did with after effects was make like uh, I was doing some football thing where uh, I made breath come out of the, the players helmets because they were playing in like sub freezing temperatures so I Okay. Right before the ball is hiked in football, there you could see the breath, but I, I wasn't very good with the After Effects. Well, subtle subtlety is uh, is a good thing to have too. They can all be explosions, you know. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> and uh, okay, we'll move on. To, in 2013, you made a, a Lego Iron Man. I guess it was a uh, trailer recreation, so you have a side by side as well as just uh, your brick film version of it, and. Mm-hmm. Wow, like I said, your green screening action uh, where you know Iron Man flies in and it's not just a static image like I would do with uh, Galactic Smugglers green screening or whatever. You are act- you're actually moving your, your figure around. Um, how, are, how are you shooting that figure in front of a green screen to separate it so you're not getting these reflections? Because it's just incredible. Well, so that shot, um, everything up until... Uh, I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, I think that shot is on set. So the green screen is behind the set. Mm-hmm. So I think it's only like 10 frames where he's completely on green screen. Um, and then he crosses into the set. And so then after everything after that is either masking or, or adding lens flares or whatever. But uh, okay. yeah, the the Iron Man's actually kind of 
easy because he's he's you know comparatively because he's yellow or sorry he's red. red yeah. The yellow part is tricky. What what a good thing to do for anyone out there trying to key and is having problems like. Obviously, there's techniques of keying you can go into, but if there's something that's just not working, like I will take the unkeyed footage, put it on top, and then mask out as much as I can so that the initial footage is still there, and then just the edges part is is the key. Um, that saved my my butt a bunch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done that technique a few times, and that takes a long time. <laughs> oh, you know oh, it. I, oh. My life has been rotoscoping at this point, so oh, because yeah. I didn't know you know, all the tricks of the trade, a lot of this is just painstaking rotoscoping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I try to, I try to avoid making myself do that, but some shots you just have to do it. Yep. And that's the case in the big, the big movies. Like I, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm studying 3d, uh, 3d animation and someone came to talk to us. Who's a, you know, a legit compositor. She worked on a shot in, uh, age of Ultron. And basically her job on that was to, to key out the, uh, no, sorry, rotoscope out the uh, motion capture guy because the robot from Ultron was smaller than the ro the guy. So anyway, it's it's just at any level you're going to be rotoscoping. So it's definitely <laughs> a good uh, a good you know skill to have. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So you're obviously a very patient person because you have to have patience to do stop motion. But I mean that's just blown out of proportion when you're doing um, what you're doing with all the After Effects and chroma keying and all that. That's just mm. a whole another level mm -hmm. well you know that's it is true i do have that but but i i honestly i'm such a lazy animator like it's it's as far as the, the stop motion goes at least like because you have to be you know to get a good a good you know good lighting good all that stuff you have to be kind of alone in a room with perfect lighting and everything that i like that i there's there's a serenity to that but it's so rare that i get that opportunity and so the fact that i can do that kind of work whether it be rotoscoping or adding you know big effects or whatever on my computer anywhere i am like on the bus or you know just before bed on the couch or like anywhere that is a huge uh benefit you know yeah, what i mean i never thought about that that's actually a great that's a yeah. great way of looking at it yeah that, that's yeah really I, nice. I can i'm never bored because i always have these th these little projects i can do whereas if i if i was a <laughs> how do i say this a better or more committed stop motion animator, I would be stuck in that in that room with my you know specific set, specific lighting, and which is which is uh, hard. And because I have a family, and because I have uh, you know now I have a young son, it's almost impossible. So uh, I'm happy to spend as much time on the computer fixing bad animation rather than staying in the dark room making yeah. perfect animation. It's a less lonely job. I can see that. That's a, that's it a, is, yeah. that's great. Actually, I never thought about that. Mm. Well, you did do a really neat uh, uh, actual stop motion effect. I think it was when um, Iron Man uh, is on the ground. He's leaned over, but his head is tilted upwards because he's looking forward. How did you do that? Yep. Did you carve the neck? or? No, I think that's uh, clay. I, I was, I was, I was uh, too cheap to carve the neck. Now, I, <laughs> I, the most grief... Like this video is, I guess you would call it my baby. Like, obviously it's the only one that has over a million views, but if you ever read the comments, it's just like wrong Iron Man suit, wrong Iron Man suit, wrong Iron Man suit. I'm like, I couldn't afford the right one. Like the right one came with a, a huge set and I got, I got this one cause it was cheap. It was like 24 bucks. So uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I didn't expect so much backlash, but oh wow, apparently, wow. apparently it's the wrong suit, even though it's been viewed, you know. A lot. Well, I didn't catch that. I was going to say, I didn't catch it either, so. <laughs> and who well, cares? I mean, really, look at the... A lot of people care. Well. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> so, but so... yeah, no, I agree. I, I, I just I just couldn't uh, couldn't afford the big one, but it's so, all good to me. So you said you used clay. What was it you just put the head kind of in front of it enough? Yeah, because it's the mask, you, there's a lot of room there and so it's just the basic um, like minimum amount of clay on the on the nub of the head like oh the so you left the head out and just put the the helmet over clay yeah exactly ah okay cool cool i get yeah. you now i got it i got it well i like that. that 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 really worked um um yeah very cool very yeah cool. the whole thing works so yeah, yeah no, I was I happy with this one because uh, again this is the first one of the first other than helm steep that i'm using onion skinning so i was able to actually get kind of the look i wanted Finally. So do you? So if you were to animate today, would you use onion skinning or would you use like loop last frame? Oh, three hundred percent onion skinning. Oh, okay. Just like, I, I can't stand see, onion skinning. I want to see both. Myself. I mean, you, the beauty of Dragon Frame is you can cut it in and out if you need. Yeah. Uh, 
but yeah, like I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning a lot about 3d stuff and how important reference is and mm -hmm. everything. And so any, anything, I know there's people out there that think using a reference or using onion skinning is cheating, but I don't understand that at all. It's whatever you can use. I, like, I, don't, I don't think it's cheating, but I actually found after a certain point that I prefer just having it uh, go back and forth between the last frame and the current frame. Well, that's all you need, really. Yeah, I, don't, I don't need to um, see the whole thing. The onion but, skinning, yeah, at, le at least that frame before and after. Yeah, because if you bump something in the background, it's just going to barely go fuzzy. Uh -huh. Whereas if you're on the loop last frame, it's going to jitter. And I could see where I accidentally hit something in the background, and I could see it just jittering. It's like, ooh, I accidentally touched that, where I might not catch it in onion skinning. No, true. And you do, you do mostly just need the one or, the one or before or after, but... Uh, yeah. But yeah, like, if you don't have it, how are you going to catch that uh, bump? And then all of a sudden, uh, your shot's messy and you don't understand why. Yeah, I don't know how anybody can animate without uh, onion skinning or loop last frame, some sort of reference. I, I know uh, Maxine Marion uh, did, uh, with Studio Epsilon, did some of his uh, his work, his early works without right. without onion skinning. I don't, yeah, know. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how he did it. Uh, well, mine kudos, was horrible when I didn't have it. Still good stuff, right? So, yeah. Yeah, but no, as far as I'm concerned, there is no cheating. I mean, anything you can do to make your job easier and make things look better, you go for it. Totally. It's all tricking the eye. That's all we're trying to do. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's not video. It's just 15 frames strung together. <laughs> Pictures. Well, you know what? I, I've heard you guys talk about that before, and it's kind of the only time I've ever realized that 15 frames is the norm because uh, I've always done 24 and I, I just have always done it, and I've never known anything different. And I, and I didn't know this whole time I could have been cutting out, you know, <laughs> ten frames of, of, of a second. So, so when you, when you're doing uh, twenty four frame, are you doing it full twenty four or uh, on the twos doing twelve oh, yeah. frames? No, full twenty four. I, wow. I like I said, I had no idea you could do it any other way. I knew you could do thirty, but I assumed twenty four was the was the easiest it got. Wow. And, okay. and also, I'm I'm kind of choppy anyway, as far as moving minifigures. So I I, if I had gone that route, it would have probably been pretty bad. Okay. Um. Let's see. Um. How the Lord of the Rings should have ended. <laughs> Very. Cute. That was just an excuse to blow something up. Yeah. Yeah. But that it was, was funny. It was funny. It, was it looks cute. like I believe it was your first uh, mouth animation. Uh, you introduced that as a a, a new uh, thing that you did. I thought that was nice to start seeing you do that. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I saw somebody else start it, so I was like, "Well, you gotta, you gotta up the game." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I started off where I kind of did like you, is I take one picture, like in my early stuff, and if I was doing dialogue, I wouldn't move them around, and that allowed me to go and add mouths early on. So I had mouths way early on, but I didn't have mouths on moving Lego at first. Yeah, I didn't do that until I got into compositing. I didn't do any of that stuff, but uh, but uh, yeah. It's nice to see you do that, but um, kind of this kind of segues into the twenty-four frame because I know I did a, a your next thing was a rebrick entry competition for rebrick uh, film competition. It was the yeah. Food Fighter you made, and I believe that's where I was introduced to your work and been a uh, been a Big fan, fan been, ever, been a, since. ever since. I probably reached out. I, I if I'm not incorrect, I think I reached out to you and personally asked you to join the uh, Brick Filmers Guild. Uh, That's right. Right after that. So you were actually a member of the old ELGG site, the uh, the old site, not the new one. But uh, glad. so I'm glad to have you on. You've been around a uh, member for seven years, so that's awesome. Um, but I know one of the rules in the Rebrick competition was it had to be 24 frames a second. So I think that was my first attempt at 24 frames. Oh, really? Um, um, and I'm, I, I don't like it that much. I occasionally will do it uh, 24 frames a second. I think I did a recent motorcycle jump where I did 24 because it looked better than 15. It was smoother. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, I stay at 15 and sometimes because I'll edit in 30 sometimes. So I sometimes might do a 30 frame. Uh, there were a few shots in the Grand Theft Auto that were 30. But uh, but you were used to doing 24 frames. So I guess doing the, the rebrick thing for you was uh, just nothing new to you. Yeah, I mean, I I struggled with uh, the idea. Like, I I wanted I wanted that win, right? Like, we you know we we it was right when the Lego Movie was coming out, and you got your your piece featured. And if you look at it, like I I still didn't have a DSLR at the time. Like my 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 uh, image is actually pretty grainy. Um, and I also I think I think I had all my Lego by then, but I, I also just remember not having that much Lego. 
for some reason. But uh, yeah, I, I, I was that was kind of like a big one for me. I was like, oh, I gotta get this, and uh, you know, no, obviously. I didn't, I didn't, I think they actually appro- approached me to have it on some DVD feature, mm-hmm. but because I used music that wasn't uh. mine or something, they couldn't use it, but, oh, um, that's a shame. yeah, it, it's okay. But like at the time that was kind of my first introduction to contests, which was, uh, you know, in theater, you're not ever, uh, a stranger to, you know, being told no and all that stuff. So it didn't come that, that, as, you know, as that big a blow, but it was also, you know, I also saw in that one some of the best work I had seen yet. So it was kind of a, a wake up call to where I was. I think yeah. I got the, the DSLR pretty soon after that. Cool seeing the carrots and the bananas sticking into the wall. Yeah, that was tricky because uh, I didn't build the wall, you know, in advance so that I could just replace it. So I had to I had to switch those bricks out so carefully to not bump the set. It was kind of annoying, but uh, yeah, it looked kind of cool. Yeah, yeah that really was really cool. cool. And I yeah, I don't know how you. Uh, replace those uh, plain bricks with the 90 degree bricks as smooth as you did. I was me neither. (laughs) Yes. That, that type of replacement is it's tough. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And you mentioned uh, uh, a camera upgrade to the DSLR and actually for my next note uh, going into the AFOL conscious contest entry, uh, which Mm -hmm. is your next video is another uh, rebrick thing for, uh, and we entered that as well. Um, but yeah, you could definitely ch- tell the clarity of your pictures. Uh, definitely jumped up. Uh, yeah, totally. It, it was it was it was a tricky. There was a tricky uh, learning curve about depth of field and focus, mm-hmm. where the camcorder would focus immediately on what you wanted. But that was took a few trial runs to figure out the, the depth of field for sure. Mm-hmm. So did you win that one? No, I. I lost it there was only one winner like it was a win or nothing kind of thing and uh. it went to somebody else who did kind of one of those uh minifigure puppets doing a, a song that they had wrote or something it was really good but it you know it was it was completely different from mine so it was like comparing apples and oranges and it won but uh i think the i think the prize was a i think it was the u what do you call it the ucs or whatever mm. uh uh sydney opera house okay that might and have been like, david oh, body that, that would be sweet but really? uh didn't work out but at the time like there's a lot of contest entries on my on my site and that was kind of like the only thing at the time that would really get me off my off my butt to like make a movie because of the time commitment and the uh you know the commitment to sitting alone Mm -hmm. but oh your lego build of the that street was just incredible Uh, because were those all just your own builds they were it took up a whole dining table wow Wow. this is that was was a gorgeous build yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I really notice all in in all of your videos right from the the start. Um, your builds are amazing. They're always really beautiful, um, really detailed, and just yeah, they're all wow. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, that's how I you know that's it's always been a love of of the build, and uh, that's fallen to the wayside lately. But uh, because of the small pieces and everything with my son, but uh, it's definitely part of the process. I love. Yeah. And I think it's that just shows how creative you are. You're theater background i mean you're you're a creative person so that really comes through um in your stories and your and your builds and everything it's beautiful do you practice or do any other types of art like painting or uh other types of visual arts no i'm a bad i'm a bad artist i I mean i i can draw but i'm not a great artist like i'm going to school right now with with some amazing artists and i just don't understand how they do it and so a lot of their work looks great um some of them don't have the experience I have with animation. And so, uh, you know, it's their film is more focused on the look, whereas I focus more on the, the actual animation. But uh, no, that's something I would I wish I, I had a better handle on, for sure. I also dug the pirate ship going down the street. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. That's, Even made a little cool waves scene. of concrete. That's a cool scene, yeah. Yeah, definitely cool, definitely cool. Um, uh, there's got a little small one here. Uh, it's uh, Le Iron Man Miserable. <laughs> yep. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a take on Les Mis. So Les yeah. Iron Man Miz. I don't know. It, it was it was a it was an inside joke because my wife was on the national tour uh, in the States, which is was a big deal at the time of Les Mis. And so she got a guy who she worked with to make this little joke. <clears throat> I think if you're familiar with the movie, he says something about like, um, I will you can use this precious silver to become an honest man. 
And so he changed it to Iron Man, and that, that was uh, the joke. That's <laughs> funny. Uh, one of the effects I noticed in there is you did a 360 spin shot. Was that yeah. done on a Lazy Susan? Mm-hmm. Okay. That was my first trial with it, and uh, it worked pretty good, except that I it was too slow for the music. So I speed, I, it is sped up in the film mm -hmm. to double time, I think. Okay. Yeah. So it was what, 48 frames a second? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Not I don't know. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, and did, did so? The, the, did you have your lights move with the the turntable, or it just the lights were where they were? So, it's tricky. the The set had to be built in four separate walls, so they had to be completely disconnected from each other. So the camera would f be facing through the empty space and as it got to about nine or 45 degrees i would replace the wall back and take off the next one mm -hmm. so that you could you could always see inside the set um so the lights didn't move um but because it again because it's it's doubles time you kind of really don't notice the flickers or anything yeah yeah um I've, i'm actually that's what the kind of the set is on down in my studio right now is i have a set that's similar i've i created a uh, a lazy susan out of lego uh one of the larger base plates and it's oh, about okay. three or four bricks high and you just pull off the walls as you need to um um and it's uh it's i and for that i just i put one light above so that the light is always in the center um but i also have a like a three foot lazy susan i made that sits straight on my uh, uh, animation table, and I can, if I want to, I can pretty much put the the lights on the table, and the lights will move as the table moves. Oh, that's awesome! So, yeah, uh, I, I actually saw in your latest one. I forget the name of it, but I saw I saw a, a Susan move, and I was like, ah, oh, sweet. Yeah, well, I've, I've, <laughs> I've been real fascinated with doing those. Although this this last video I'm working on, um, I almost liked how I did the previous one, where I could. It's harder if you've if you've kind of pre-built a, a set on a, on a, like this lazy Susan, it's hard to build, pull pieces out. If you want to yeah. get your camera at a lower angle, closer up. Um, um, so it's kind of little things I'm learning along the way. Oh, totally. Yeah. I actually, that uh, lightsaber video I was talking about where I used the Susan, I ended up scrapping the whole idea of that. And I would, no, that that's wrong. I would, I would, I would do the same technique for the set but not with the characters there. So the characters are animated on a green screen and the set is moving. Um, but I found, yeah, I just found it so hard to, you know, re remove the right piece, move the character, make sure, you know, there's no bumps and do that for every frame rather than just have a background of the set moving mm -hmm. and putting it behind. Mm -hmm. So that's a technique you could use too. Cool. 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 Wolverine is anti, anti smoking. <laughs> yeah. So, so much awesome in that one. <laughs> This, this is, a, I, I really noticed how much you made things truly pop out using uh, uh, After Effects, like the open sign or, which was uh, or the which no Which was backwards sign. the way it should be. And again, yeah, yeah. That, that's one of those details. Um, I'm assuming details. That, that was done in post, that. And just, just, the, just the way things popped out, it looks like you went in and you, uh, I guess you uh, masked around certain things and made them brighter or you really, uh, you really... Yeah, I think it's. Just, I think I think those signs are just you know adding a glow, but they are. I did have to try to match the depth of field of the camera. Like mm -hmm. that's all in set, other than those add additions, like the mm -hmm. the glass break and the the signs and stuff. So you do have to match the the uh, I guess lighting conditions. So it's not as bright as it could be. It's kind of dampened, like the whole movie is, and then like all the compositing stuff. I was trying to figure out to make it look real. Yeah, the glass breaking was amazing. That was something I noticed right away. That was kind of the idea for the whole thing. I just wanted to break some glass. <laughs> and also, I had just seen, I think it was uh, Forrest Fire's, um, his first Captain America, and he uses so many destroyed Lego figures. Like, <laughs> I don't know if, if he's, you know, got a surplus of, of the same character or what, but he, he's fearless to just destroy these things. So I, I was like, I'm going to try that. So that was the first one where I had two of the same I think it's a hand solo body and I, I destroyed one of them for this for the swipe wow wow yeah it was amazing it, it really really cool okay you, you just everything you just watching that it's somebody who doesn't do the anime you just look at it and you go wow wow that's cool how's he do that how's he do that that that's my side of it <laughs> oh thanks yeah and there's a lot of i'm just looking at it now too just to make sure i'm on the same page and really there's a cool. lot of like digital zooms and stuff like post-production stuff that that i had to kind of make a bit more excitement going on 
Yeah, if you jiggle around the camera and make things pop out, it's it, you can you can take something that's like pretty good animation and just make it awesome just by just adding so much layering to the the depth of uh, the different uh, items. You know, it's on all the, about on the screen. effects, isn't it? Yeah, for me it is. Yeah, I, I, like I said before, and I'll say it again, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a lazy stop motion animator, so anything that can you know lift me up is good. I think that's awesome. Cool. You definitely found your your niche, your talent niche. <laughs> yeah whatever it is i i, I definitely uh, definitely kind of made that my brand as they say these days definitely you you totally excel in that and i mean that's an awesome thing so cool cool um cooking with thor <laughs> I, I love thor i'm a huge thor fan anybody that knows me knows he's one of my favorites are so. you a thor's fam or a chris hemsworth fan? <clears throat> um both <laughs> you yeah. guys have that great uh, uh golfing with thor when yeah, oh. <laughs> and we had awesome. Gareth was nice enough to to voice for that. Nice. Yeah, that was one of those ones that said uh, I didn't have a lot of time to animate, and I just wanted to do something fun. Oh, it's a great joke. Oh, um, yeah. Cooking with Thor is my wife's favorite because of the set. She loves the set. She thinks it's it's my best best build. Uh, it is a good set. It yeah. is a good set. And uh, you worked with Clay there a little bit here and there. A little bit, yeah. I think just when they he smashes the uh, the dough there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, do you, and so. I tried to keep the camera, I don't think it's on a lazy season, but I, th I tried to move the set every frame. So it's, for the most part, the set's kind of moving like, like an in shot, you know, steady cam, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that was a, that was a time consuming thing to make sure that all worked. But that was just a, a gimmick I wanted to use that time. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Did we bypass the one where I was talking about their voices or is that for probably them? later on? Okay, because I, I thought that was an early one. Otherwise, we'll have to go back. I know we we jump around so much, and sometimes we'll accidentally skip something. I think something. it's I think it's further down. Further down. Further down. Well, Fair enough. One. I don't well, know. Well, if not, then we're gonna go back. I, what I'm doing is I'm basically complimenting your um voice yours acting. and your wife voice acting, um and because I we haven't gone through and I don't remember the names of it's one where now I want to know which one it is. You're both putting on an English accent. It was really. Oh, fun. is it? Is it? Farther up with the uh, Game of Thrones one, is that it? Mm, the alter is it Lego Star Wars alternate ending? No, mm. no, this one right here. Okay, so we yeah, it was the, the Lego th Game, Game of Thrones? Thrones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's both of us just uh, being silly. Yeah, no, it was great because I'm very picky about Americans doing English accents or because my family days. is all English, so I can oh, really okay. so it bothers me when I hear an English accent that's not very good and. I was really impressed with both of you. I was like, wow, they're really good. So, oh, thanks. My wife is at, like, that's kind of one of her specialties is, is uh, accents. She can do almost all of them. And uh, I just kind of was mimicking the show, basically. Yeah. No, really well done. So kudos thanks. on that. Yeah, that was further down, but it just had reminded to, me. Had to make I sure know. We didn't miss it. Right. Well, because of Thor. So, okay. That's all right. We can right. jump. Jump here, jump there. Right it's there. fine. I thought your uh, uh, your set uh, for the uh, Lego Man of La Mancha trailer, yeah, that windmill just really pulled it all together. I love that. Oh, thanks. I'm proud of this one. It, it's a direct copy of the actual physical set we we did the show on. So mm -hmm. this is another kind of inside joke for the cast. Uh, but I recreated the the trailer that the show made okay. uh, in Lego. So it was a big a big kind of. Owed, owed to the show. This was, I, A, I enjoyed this contract uh, doing the show, and then I am really proud of the animation on this. It's like the subtlest thing I've ever done, I think. Like, the characters move smoothly with very little, they're not broad movements mostly, so I'm pretty proud of this one, yeah. Mm, yeah. And I guess not... I guess you were correcting me when I, I'll correct myself when I said Americans doing English accents. Yes, I know they're Canadian. Which, North Americans. Which is probably why they can do it better. I, I'm right. just I, see because I consider myself both. I'm American, but I, I have I'm English blooded, so my family's all English. So yeah, I'm I'm real picky and. Oh, you know, as you should be. Yeah, no, for sure. You can definitely butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. There you go. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> So you've uh, you've also entered a few of the uh, Bricks in Motion uh, competitions. Uh, one of them was a brawl in 2014, which you placed third, uh, called the website. Yeah, love so, that. The uh, the Lego flying dude at the end, uh, way cool. Um, was that done with masking? 
uh, I got that from a uh, Beganomation uh, behind the scenes. His, his Iron Man video. Mm-hmm. I basically copied the rig he used and uh, and made that. And so, yeah, I definitely masked out the the rig and then put a blend like a. I would take one shot of the guy and then one shot of the set. Or maybe I just took one shot of the set in general because I don't think the set moves. But um, yeah, basically just like masking it out. There was no green screen or anything. Um, but the, yeah, that was that was fully stolen from Paganimation's yeah. uh, idea. So you only needed one clean plate to do that because there was no movement of the the camera. I think so, and I think I, any movement there is, is is done in After Effects, just moving the the scene around, zooming in and moving it around. And have you done any uh, of masking type things where you're having to take a picture of a, a clean plate? every frame um uh, well i have i try to avoid it because that, that that gets you back into the territory of of not knowing what the frame before or after is um there's a secret <laughs> there is no secret well is there, there yeah yeah actually for the first time because i had not uh-huh. tried that technique ever until about a month ago okay. and with with dragon frame is you just go in and you uh you know you take your your clean or your picture uh of with the, the minifig in there Pull the minifigure out, take a clean plate, and then hide that frame. Oh, and then, yeah. then it won't play the frame. Of course, right. Okay, so you do that all the way through. So, and then when you output, you have to output all of them. All of them, or not not all of them, just the one, just every other one. So you're going to do one, three, five, seven, which would be your oh, one course. with the minifigure. Then you go back and you turn every other one off. So now you're only getting clean plates. I so see. you have two pieces of video, you put them together, and then you can go do your masking in After Effects or whatever program you use. Oh, great idea. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'd ever tried it because, because it was so frustrating to not know what was happening before and after, but uh, that's a great tip. It's, it's real easy with Dragon Frame. So um, ah. it's, it's laborious. You know, you're, you're doing twice as much stuff, and you're having to do all this extra work but it 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 wasn't very difficult um i'll have to thank fancy pants uh uh jordan johnson I think it's J- johnson yeah, right jordan, jordan johnson, johnson. Uh, yeah. uh for that uh but he he did that technique oh my gosh was when did he make the force unleashed 2012 13 something like that so oh that's uh, one of my faves oh uh, it's it's it still stands the t- test, test of time, time for sure. Oh, it really does. Sure. I know it's. Uh, I made just in case. I made a, a, a short list of like ten inspirational brick films, and that's definitely one of them. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's got to be on that list. Mm-hmm. Um, like before you move on on the website, I really love um, the dude on his computer and all the cute. Um, I I love that effect anyway when people do things on the computer and you can actually see, you know, like you saw him looking up your. Um, YouTube channel and you had the right. warriors back there and I just love all those little details so that stuck out to me a lot I thought it was great oh thanks yeah I, I was I don't know again it was it was you had to come up with the story really quick I remember and uh, yeah it was it was just kind of making fun of I had had a lot of just like I don't know not bad experiences but you, you start to like read your comments and you're like what and so it was kind of a take on on those people who take the internet a bit too seriously. <laughs> totally. No, it's funny. I love details like that. It's awesome. Yeah. That one, I remember that one. Yeah, it came third, um, which was cool. I, I think I got a little Lego set out of it, which was awesome. Um, but yeah, I remember there being like so, some people being uh, upset about the amount of effects I used and, and it not being pure or whatever. So I was, I was, I kind of had a bit of a bad taste in my mouth at, at the end of that one, but it was, uh, I'm happy with the video. It came out well. Yeah, well, we yeah. enjoyed, we enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, you got third I'll place. Take, that's that's pretty good. That's so pretty you awesome. Should, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 I don't need to uh, harp on that. Like it's 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 water over the bridge, but it's it was just another like reinforcement of the story I was telling, which was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I totally yeah. totally get it. People can say whatever they want on the internet, so. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you definitely have to, you know, if you if you don't have thick skin, then don't be on the internet. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, in, 2000, in 2014, you made a, a Lego a- ALS uh, Ice Bucket Challenge. We did yeah. as well. Um, oh, yeah. Yours was way cool. It kind of looked a lot like ours, except we use Oyos in ours because our, <laughs> our, our clients wanted us to make that video. <laughs> okay, cool. But that was really cool. Yeah, it was um, fun. And then uh, a little later on, I guess that year, you made another uh, uh, Bricks in Motion contest. Uh, uh, this was uh, Bricks in Motion Celebration Contest. I'm not sure if this one was for their movie... I think it might have been. I think this was the. Is this the love story one? 
first contact? Yeah, the, there's. I don't remember the context of the competition, but yeah, I remember it had to be a celebration. Yeah, I do. I think that might have been for the movie um, that the uh, um, Philip did. The I don't remember. Movie. I could be wrong about <laughs> that. It might have been a different one, but uh, yeah, I definitely, definitely, really enjoyed that one. That's yeah. And of course, it was a beautiful story. I'm a hopeless romantic, so I love right. that. It was really sweet. Yeah, I, I liked. I liked the reveal of of the. Uh, you know, the blonde hair coming out of the helmet there and, and then him turning into a gushy eyed guy. But, yeah. uh, I sit, I, I love this video. I do. I do think it's, it's, it's uh, pretty visually cool, but I didn't mask or key out the uh, green in her helmet <laughs> off the mm -hmm. top. So it's pretty obvious that there's a green screen back there, which, yeah. which somebody brought to my attention. I didn't notice it until they did. Now I can't not see it. So that's a bummer, but, uh, I do like this video. I didn't cool. notice it. So oh, well, cheers. Well, now you do it. Now you can't unsee it. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. What's next? Lock and load in Lego. Yeah. That's a straight up just recreation of, um, obviously if anyone out there's, you know, a fan of after effects, you're a fan of video copilot, which is a website that has a bunch of awesome tutorials, which kind of, you know, I don't think there's a person out there doing brick films who uses After Effects a lot that hasn't used one of those. So that's a, a big nod to him. Mm -hmm. And I think if I'm not incorrect, is that the one that has a little bit of a video breakdown at the end? Yeah. Yeah, exactly like yeah. his does. So yeah. so they made that um, they made that the same video kind of to show off their effects. And mm -hmm. so I, I just copied that exactly to show off the way I did it. Yeah, it's really yeah cool. that's awesome. And funny. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's a great video. I can't take credit for the for the story or anything, but it's uh, it it was fun to do. I think he, he shouted me out on Twitter, maybe. Oh, sweet. Cool. cool yeah. Cool. That's definitely always nice when people do that. Mhm. Mm Let's see. What was a uh, Lego Space Chase? Um, looks like you uh, start. Um, yeah, you start using uh, CGI uh, a lot more. So uh, I'm assuming uh, right in those about those time you started dabbling in uh, uh, CGI. Well, yes. So this one is kind of the in between phase. This is all done in After Effects. There's no um, third party program or anything. But I am taking advantage of their 3D camera. So I, if you watch the breakdown at the end, you see that the whole set, like the whole canyon, is made of one image of rocks just placed in 3d space within after effects mm -hmm. and then the hardest part of the whole thing is making sure the three the, the camera goes through it properly mm -hmm. and then you can see that the you know again lazy animator the the ship is actually just me holding the ship on a on a green stick or something and then you composite it all together now, are you doing stop motion shots on the stick or are you just doing a uh, video uh, it's live action video for the flying stop motion. Anytime she's in the cabin, oh, I think. Okay. And I think there's, there's a few, like there's a weapon coming down that, that, that is stop motion, but it's, okay. it, it was very much, I think I just like ran through these plates to just have something to work on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I would, I would, you know, get the easiest plate I could and then I could work on it for months and months and, and, uh, and just be wherever I was working on it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, well, it, 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 I really loved that one. It had a lot of energy to it, and I, I, I thought all the, the spaceship was stop motion and you do, doing more incredible work keeping the green from reflecting, and it's just, it's it's a cool video. Oh, thanks. Yeah, a lot of keying in this one. Just every shot is, is on a green screen, so it's big-time keying, and uh, this technique actually got me kind of into what I was doing, what I'm doing. We'll talk about it later, but what mm -hmm. I'm doing with Adam in the, in the, mm -hmm. in hit with his work mm -hmm. is, is kind of these, these space battle things. So this was kind of a big, big turning point that way. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then you made in 2016, you made a, a really killer, a, a rogue one trailer in, in Lego. Um, I'm assuming yeah. that came out before the uh, collaboration one. Uh, that like, if not, if not at the same time, just before I remember, yeah. mine was was a bit early, and then uh, and then yeah, of course the, the collaboration came out, which is which is awesome as well. But yeah. uh, both of them are awesome. I yeah, think really I think but, I, those were the two best ones I, I can remember seeing on on the internet. Um, and there was there were a couple of bad ones, but uh, <laughs> the, your your yours and and the collaboration one uh, fantastic was, was were fantastic. Yeah, the collaboration one is is definitely 
so you can tell it's some of the best animators coming together to make theirs with some amazing visual effects too. Like, um, bricks brought to life really nailed it there. But, uh, um, mine is like the epitome of me cheating. Like <laughs> there's so many cheats in this one. Like not, I don't think there's one physical set built other than, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe a few here and there, but most of it is all just composited. Like the characters are running on the spot on a green screen and I just make the movie and after effects and there's all kinds of, of cheats. And I use the same technique I used in the space chase mm -hmm. to make, uh, the final scene. So it's all still done in after effects, which is why it looks so kind of, you know, fake, but it, uh, it was, it was cool. It was, it was a way to get it done fast. And that, cause I knew at the time a little back, like to step back, like you guys know all about YouTube and how <laughs> fickle it can be and how Definitely. weird it can be. And this was kind of my, uh, one, one tactic I was using was to, was to recreate trailers or to do something that people might notice. And so that was why I wanted to get this one out fast. And so there's a lot of uh, cutting corners on this one, but it's still like, I'm still happy with it. It looks yeah. cool. It was killer. It was killer. Yeah. And really, I mean, when it comes to making trailers and stuff, the, the early bird gets the worm, um, mm, no matter how good or bad it is. If you're like the first, you know, one of the first to get it out there, it's the one that's going to get all the, uh, attention even if it doesn't deserve it so so it's sad for the ones that come out after that really deserve it that don't get it as much you know oh totally and i mean for me like uh i think i was demonetized a while back like i may, maybe i made like i think some people might find this interesting but like I, I i probably made like five bucks on youtube like because i use a lot of copyright music like i don't i don't really it's never really been about the money i just mm -hmm. kind of wanted the views like I, I i wanted to put my work out there but then with that mentality, you start doing work you think other people want to see and not work you want to do. And so this was kind of the, the end of that. Or I guess uh, I guess I do I do, do a trailer for Assassin's Creed, which was a mm -hmm. similar thing. But like this was kind of the epitome of me be, kind of giving up on, on the YouTube dream and, and just kind of realizing that, you know, whatever you do, it's still up to the algorithm or up to viewers or whatever. So yeah. I, de I definitely did this for a reason. But I'm also happy I made it because I, I learned a lot and I, I like the result. But uh, it was definitely not um, an, a passion project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, your next project, you dive 100% into CGI. Um, this is the chorus line. Ah, uh, uh, yes. And, uh, so, again, this is, <laughs> this is my progression. I don't actually touch a 3D program until uh, Iron Man versus Batman, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. But... This is all done in After Effects. So those characters, oh my gosh, to think back on this one, the reason it looks so weird is because those characters are all made from 2D images created in 3D space. So I was measuring uh, minifigures, uh -huh. and I was using math for the first time since high school, <laughs> and like trying to figure out you know, how high up the head would be on the body and then I would make a sphere out of 2d images and I was taking pictures of Lego and like cutting it into shapes that I could move in 3d space. Like I should really do a breakdown on it. Cause it's, oh, it's wow. quite extensive. Like those characters are all just images put into 2d space. And so the, the size of the file was so big and it would took so long to render. And so I had to each render each character alone. Um, because it couldn't handle all of it together. Uh -huh. wow. So yeah, so it, it, it's hard to describe, but it was it was a real oh boy. If I had just gotten Cinema 4D, yeah. So you said it this was so After much Effects, easier, but because, because I tried to do it this route, it took a while. And you said that was in After Effects. You're do, doing all that. One hundred percent in After. Oh my god! I don't even know how that would be done. So wow, that's just incredible yeah. that you were able to pull that off using that. It was definitely. A technique that shouldn't be used it's not uh, it's not you know cost effective time wise but it, it was it was uh, it was a cool result to get what I wanted because I there were again this is a show I was doing at the time and I wanted to make a you know a tribute to the show and so there aren't I think the only gold person you could get was Mr. Gold which is like you know I think they're on eBay for a million dollars now so yeah. I had to make a workaround I even tried painting Lego figures and which wasn't working because every time they would move, you would chip some of the paint yeah, off. And right. and so anyway, I, it, it had to be done in CG and it had to be done this way because it was the only way I knew. So. That's quite a trip. Wow. Quite a trip. Yeah. Well, hey, but you know, at least you used some math again, right? 
<laughs> oh, exactly. And it's, it's come in handy since then. So I'm, I'm happy I'm back on the math train. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll go into your, uh, pretty much kind of your, sort of your last two, um, stop motion, um, ones. You have your, uh, yeah. you did a, a, a another rebrick, uh, entry. Yep. Uh, the, the, my Porsche dream race. I actually entered that as well. And I think, uh, Adam Nye's entered that too. That's um, how we met. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. He both both because... yours were better than mine. <laughs> well, I, I honestly don't remember the, the rest of the competition. I just remember putting this up there. And I, again, I was, I was over the contest thing. I just thought I'd throw yeah. my hat in the ring. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of the digital techniques in this one that I used and, and Adam hit me up because he wanted his Porsche to fly at the end. And so he, he asked me about keying and because he, like we talked about before, he was having some trouble keying, I think. So mm -hmm. I threw him a quick tutorial and, um, you know, he said, thank you and everything. And we, we didn't talk for a while. And then he, he ended up contacting me later, but, uh, yeah. but that was how we met. And so, yeah, this, this video was kind of fun. I, all the music, because I had that trouble with the last rebrick competition about, uh, them not being able to use it because of music. I made all the sound effects and music by myself, like just with my mouth. Mm -hmm. And so it, it kind of, it kind of gives that kind of fun. Yeah, fun it is twist. fun. It, it's fun. And you know, it's, it's ma mainly for, for kids in a way. And it, it yeah. definitely came across very kids like, um, so that, that worked, that worked. I, I was happy to use the, the mixer, like the, the carnival mixer set that my wife got me for my birthday once. And I, I've been meaning to do a carnival movie for a long time, but I finally got to use it in that video. It was excellent, excellent. I, I so really did you win it. on that one? Or was uh, that another I don't one -winner? recall. I don't think so. Uh, I completed this in four days. I don't think I. I don't think I won anything, which is which is That's fair. Sad. Yeah, I don't remember who won that one either. Oh yeah, no, I remember not winning now. But uh, but yeah, there were some good. There were some good entries. Some creative entries, I think, won. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned a little bit before the Assassin's Creed trailer and Lego. Oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, the fact that it only has 17,000 views is... It's a crime. It is. That's a crime. Uh, that thing should thanks, be, have guys. a million views. I appreciate it. I, I'm. This is definitely the best and last stop motion I ever did, yeah. Yeah. Do you think you'll uh, be making any more stop motion when uh, once the, the Legos don't look as edible? Yeah, right? I, I, re I really hope so. I mean, I'd love to show him the ropes eventually. Uh, he loves Duplo, and so we'll at least yeah. get playing with Lego in a few years. Yeah. Um, it's funny. You can never. You, you always want to kind of impose your shortcomings on your kids. Like you know, what I mean, like I could have been great at this, but you will. But now you will be. So I, I, I'll kind of let him decide if if he wants to get into it or not. But uh, I would definitely like to set up this the room again and get some some real Lego going on. Especially after, like we were saying before, all the tutorials now about how to up your game. So. Oh yeah. Well, well you know, I'll, our I'll daughter be... started animating at three years old. So. Really. You know, yeah. There you go. Yeah, she gave it up a few years later, but she did. She did. Uh, you know. She, <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, I remember my dad plays guitar, and and uh, I played drums, and I, I tried to get him to teach me once, and I think, we had one lesson, and it never happened again. So you can never, <laughs> you can never count on uh, your kids doing exactly what you do. But no, but she did it for quite a while, and she even did some for school. So I mean, it's a good thing to learn. I mean, either a a kid, especially a young kid, you either have patience for it or you don't. So. She right. actually did. It was more like schoolwork out in the way after that, and she just didn't have the time. That and walk cycles. Yeah, walk, walk cycles. cycles, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like, oh, no, I don't want to do a walk cycle. <laughs> <laughs> very cool, very cool. Uh, then we move into your your uh, CGI um, um, portion of your career. Um, yeah, the, and uh... Um, you uh, did a um... Lego Star Wars Battlefront teaser trailer. Now, that one is actually the same technique I used for Chorus Lion. So okay. all those ships are made of 2D images just placed in 3D. Okay. So again, again, I had, to, I had to render each ship separately because of the, the size of them. Mm -hmm. Like if you pause it on everyone, like every once in a while you can see that it's just a bunch of 2D images. Like it's not a good 3D model. Yeah. And so it's, I think it says like this is a, a test or something. And okay. I wanted to make like a huge, huge epic battle with this technique, but it's just so time consuming so that's this was the catalyst for uh ending up getting involved with cinema 4d which is which is what kind of opened up everything since excellent 
Excellent. Yeah. And is that is that what you're using these days, or are you uh, have you moved to different types of products, or is that your main product that uh, you use? Cinema 4D. Okay, so Blender is the free one, mm-hmm. um, but it's or at least it used to be very complicated and unintuitive to learn. Like I tried. There's a bunch of tutorials, and I tried to get into it. And I think I even tried around the course line time, and I I was just like, no, this is it's easier to make these characters from scratch than to try to learn this program. And so I gave up on it, but then I figured out, um, I think I figured out through uh, one specific tutorial that did Lego in it. And I was like, oh, well, this is the tutorial. And he, he used Cinema 4D. And so I was like, okay, let's let's chill it out here. So I, I ended up getting Cinema 4D. And uh, boy, it was just so intuitive. Like this between getting it and Iron Man versus Batman coming out was like weeks. Like I just, I learned it so fast and it was so easy is to me. Um, and it was finally, I was finally able to see my vision, like the whole, wow. the whole kind of theme with my, my Lego videos is trying to be larger than, than life. And, and I was never really getting the result I wanted. And so, so finally with cinema 40, I was able to get the camera moves, get the lighting, get the, you know, the action that I wanted. And so it, this, that was kind of like, a big explosion for me. So you said you made that in three weeks? Yeah, it, w- it was fast. Holy I, I had got the characters. I made the set. Uh, I don't know if anyone out there is familiar with Mecha Bricks. Uh, M-E-C-A Bricks dot com. It's basically an online uh, Lego site. And you can they have every brick almost that you can just like, create online. And you can also download the model. And so... I would download the model. It comes right into Cinema 4D. You have to move the pivot points and group all the all the uh, the things that move together together. Mm-hmm. But once you have the pivot points, you just animate it. And okay. it was it was like super. It was like you know, what's something that's easy? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. Making toast. It was like boom. Okay. You just like slap the peanut butter on there, and you got a movie. So wow, excellent. Well, yeah, that, I love cool. that. I love that one. I'm and I'm not the I'm not the biggest into the uh, CGI. Um, no, always, that's fair. But uh, man, that that one was awesome. It was it was it was, it was cool. I, um, definitely cool. Yeah, this is this is kind of where you know my uh, my right to be here kind of gets questioned because I, I definitely do move into all digital from now on. You know, I, I'm 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 fine with that. We we had a recent uh, uh, brick film that was you know in our, our brick film was go film festival. It was not this last year, but the year before. Um, um, Gareth, uh, Gareth Pugh entered a CGI, which, um, we were totally fine with and it was, but we had in the rules, it was not eligible for certain categories. Okay. Um, but it's, it's, I think it won what, um, it won several, you know, one, one, one of the things it was for, and it probably would have definitely been one of the nominees for best film. Um, uh, but unfortunately, you know, that's, kind of one of the rules we had that it, it needed to have a, a, a somewhat 50, of a probably 50 percent actual stop, stop motion. motion but right. you know but so, cgi is still really important it gets used yeah. a lot so it's mm-hmm. still we like to recognize and, and we and, certainly appreciate and it. that's what i i love about the lego movie uh, is they 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 do cgi but it's done in a uh a stop motion type way totally um and and i really dig that i i'm I'm not as into the, the the CGI Lego CGI where it has the wiggly torsos and legs. I, I like them to follow the same physics as the plastic parts, um, but that's just a you know a preference of mine. No, I hear you. I I was so turned off when the video games uh, came out about about the way they moved. I I, I thought that was so <laughs> so lame. You know, I was like they don't move like that. They, they move really static. And so that the Lego movie actually committed to that was pretty awesome. And, yeah. um, that's what I tried to do until in a, from a 3d animation point of view, I did end up rigging a, a, a character that way. And it's so much more articulate. So I, I now do understand why that technique is used because you can get more movement out of the character, but there is something so charming about the way they move, like with mm. only one joint per limb, you know, and, I try to stick to that. Yeah, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm even cool with the out of socket or moving the head around a little bit. Have a little jiggle in the head. It's cool, right. but not as into when the whole torso turns. But that's just, just my preference. We're we're no, more old school, but still, like I said, and everybody has their preference. So it's gonna, you know, 
to each his own. You have it works for different people, so but it's if, still really yeah. important. But work. if I'm not in, not incorrect, I think you might have had a wiggly torso maybe once in one of your videos. I'm um, not sure. So the everything up until I do two short like ten seconders. Uh, there's an Iron Man, uh, the new Iron Man suit suit up, and a Doctor Strange, and those are the only ones I use the bendy model for. Uh, everything else is is trying to stick to the to the physics of real real models. I mean, you, you can take liberty in 3D that you can't mm -hmm. in Lego, like because you don't have to constrain to the neck the neck stud or the or the hip studs. Mm -hmm. I could move, you know, the 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 body from the hips more smoothly, and I might have taken liberty with that. But uh, for the most part, I try to keep it as they would move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's nice that you're able to do both. I mean, the more things you can do, you know, the better. Makes your yeah. resume even longer. So. Yeah, I. Uh, I don't know. It's it's funny that even though I moved only only now, am I starting to branch out of the Lego thing because, you know, I'm taking a program for it. But but even after jumping into the, 3D realm, it's all been Lego for me as far as YouTube goes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I really dug your uh, your Star Wars uh, alternate ending. I thought oh, that was really funny, um, and I had some great voice acting at the end. Or actually, well, actually, that was throughout, you. Throughout. you. You did all the voices, correct? I think I did most of them. I'm always I'm always pretty shy to ask for help, so I, I tried to tried to manipulate my voice to be different enough. But uh, yeah, that was for a competition. I think it was. I think I just googled like animation competitions, and it was it was something. Basically, the idea was. Uh, a scene from a movie with a different ending. So I tried to, I tried to get it as close to the movie as possible up until the switch when, when, when Luke misses. And so the mm -hmm. Empire wins. And then the final part is pretty much exactly the ending of a new hope, but with emperor people. So I, oh, like, yeah. I tried to make it as close to the movie as possible just with the, with the switch. Uh, yeah. Ending. I loved that. I thought it was an awesome twist and, yeah. and the voices uh, were great on all of the characters. So yeah, kudos on that. It was, I loved it. And I believe oh, you thanks. won 10th place in that. And I'm sure there were just like tons of entries into that since it wasn't just a Lego uh, competition, correct? Yeah, no, that's true. And there were, there were a lot of people and I think I won 50 bucks or something, Ooh, which oh, is wow, awesome. nice. Yeah. Take it. Yeah. Very, yeah, very cool. Very cool. The other ones must have been really great because I, I mean, that was so good. I can't even imagine what was better than that. Well, like, like you said, there were, there was, there was no. It didn't have to be a three D or B Lego. So there were. I think, I think someone who won was like a two D animation, uh, really artistic thing. Like you know, it it was a it was a broad category to judge. So I think, I think that I was even in the top ten is pretty cool. Yeah, cool, definitely. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then we get to where you had the great yeah. English accent. I know, in, I just uh, had to Lego jump back to the Lego Game of Thrones now, but it's really, really funny, really right. well oh, done, I and I, I love bend it. Bend the knee. <laughs> it it yeah, was just I, funny. I, I ended up getting a gig with that um, as well. Like uh, A guy saw that, and, and he hit me up. Uh, it's only on my Instagram, but he, he basically, um, I won't say his name or anything, but he, he was creating frames, minifigure frames. I think they held the entire... Uh, series of minifigures in one frame and it was a display frame and he was going to sell them on Instagram and so he made me make a commercial for him uh, and so it's it's basically the full first uh, series of minifigures jumping in the frame or using their their you know whatever accessories they have in the frame and that was pretty cool and so and because of that video he he found me on Instagram well, oh excellent. wow that's excellent. awesome yeah. And kudos again on the awesome English accents. You guys did great on that. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a good time, and I always love anytime I can throw in uh, uh, sabotage by the Beastie Boys into a video. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very cool, very cool. Then we uh, kind of tie into your uh, your collaborations uh, with Adam Nyes. Uh, I believe you've done three. Uh, one in 2017, uh, which was uh, his Lando's deal. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and then you did two, uh, oh, actually it is, is it, yeah, two in, in 2019, um, uh, one for the Lego group and one, uh, for Barnes and Noble in the Lego group. Yeah. So yeah, Lando's deal was a passion project of his. Um, and he, because we had worked, because I had helped him out with that one quick little effect in, in the Porsche race, he hit me up and he's been super loyal and friendly to me since. And I couldn't, uh, thank him more for that, but, uh, it, it was it was really awesome to get back into the Lego world um, because 
as I've said many times, I'm a lazy animator and he is such a good animator. So it was cool to finally do what I was doing before, but with some good animation. So I was, I was living uh, the best of both worlds, not having to, you know, do it myself, but actually getting to play with it. And also that model, he, he ended up, um, I think I'm getting this right. I think he got it shipped to him by the creator. And I, I had seen that model all over the internet beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, and to, to actually be working with that model was pretty cool too. Yeah, yeah that, was that was really cool. Neat. Yeah, because we talked about this when we on the podcast we had with Adam. So, um, so yeah, you, right. you were in that podcast. I think I was mentioned, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. So you, you did you know you did all the, the, the post um, CGI work. Did you actually like remove the, the, the fish line? Is that part that that's, you did that's right i only hand on that video i only handled the ship so anything that's happening inside of the uh the cantina is, mm -hmm. is all him and i think there's a, a few other effects in there but uh i only handled the ship so it was a lot of keying a lot of wire removal and then basically all the ships were were just either dangling or moving we had a shot in mind but they were all kind of just dangling there so i had to make them move through space and, mm -hmm. and add all the backgrounds and everything Excellent, excellent. Well, yeah, that was great work. Really nice. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, glad that you guys got connected that way and get to work oh, together. Me, he's, me, he's... me too. He's, he's the best. And uh, and uh, I think I was working on another project for somebody else that wasn't Lego related at all, but I think that project suffered a bit because I was definitely more interested in this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then um, we'll, we'll skip a, a couple here, but we'll keep stay, stay in the Adam Nye's land here. The, yep. the escape uh, from Scarif. Um, and that one, uh, I guess is the, um, uh, what's the one ship's name? Oh, the Tantive. Tantive, yeah, or, that's escaping. Yeah. And, uh, uh, who did the, um, uh, storyboards or the anima animatics for that? Now, I believe, I might be getting this wrong, but I believe he made the, the storyboards. Mm -hmm. I think since then he's used a friend of his who, to do storyboards, but I think he made them on this one. And then I made the animatic uh using the same technique i always use um to kind of figure out the shot mm -hmm. so that he could then film it on his like crazy rig <laughs> yeah uh, um, and and give me the plates i needed and then i would i would composite it all together wow wow, wow. yeah so some it's like some of the ships were true lego models and some of them were just uh, cgi models correct so every everything because adam is such a um a purist as far as you know, trying to get it all in frame. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> there's so many times when I've tried to sneak in other things that he's, that he's kind of caught me on, like adding a motion blur on top of the Lego. Like I, I personally like that look, mm -hmm. but he, 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 you know, he, he turned that down. So I, I get hit, I get where he's coming from. And so I try to match that style as much as possible. Uh, and so, yeah, so I, every sh every ship you see is real until they explode. Until they so explode. every time okay. there's an explosion, I replace it quickly with a 3d model and this is still with 4d cinema 4d that's correct okay and have you ever used blender beyond beyond just maybe looking at it a little bit well funny you say that so um adam uh and i are we're still collaborating and we're also working with um with bricks brought to life so we are we are starting to use uh bricker so i'm i'm nice. just now i purchased bricker yesterday i'm gonna open it up we're gonna try to figure it out because it, it is I said to him, I was like, um, sorry, Chris, I said to him, I was like, this is the future because so many people are using it now and it's so believable that you, you really can't notice it. Like Forest Fires use it a few times in his movies and I think uh, a few other notable brick fillers and like, it's just incredible what you can do with this program. So I actually, I tried to do a similar technique using a program that wasn't bricker and far, uh, you know, less less cool and so it, it didn't quite work out and so this time around i'm like you do it you're the man you made the program it's all you man so um we're collaborating as as a trio now so that's cool that's oh that's awesome, awesome. That's i'm awesome. glad to hear that we were kind of wondering yeah. if you used any of christopher's uh you know bricks brought brought to life products we had christopher on a podcast and i listened yeah no he's he's uh he's doing a lot of really awesome stuff with his you know his tutorials about the you know the the fundamentals of animation, which is so important to, to have. And, um, yeah, they're just both so cool guys. And I'm kind of the guy out now because I, I don't live in Georgia where mm. you guys all. <laughs> well, you guys can always move. Well, or at least visit. I, I, if, you visit. Know, if we weren't quarantined, I'd probably make a drive down there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, cool though. We were, we, we actually plan on meeting Christopher as well. We just, time kind of got away from us, haven't gotten around to that. At least Christopher and Adam, they got to meet because we kind of suggested, you know, that those two meet since they're both, they were new here and, uh, yeah, we were lucky to meet Adam, but yeah, we'll meet Christopher too. So yeah, totally, and and they're both so good about the collaborations. Like my whole career up until this point has been just kind of do it all myself and and be that lone wolf. And uh, you know, Chris with the with the what's it called the uh, Rogue One trailer, and, mm-hmm. and I think they've collaborated on a few other things. But like just bringing people together in this community is so uh, so rewarding because you know you're not bogged down by every single detail, and you get to you know have have somebody who does something maybe uh, better or, or has more experience in something do that part and, and, and you get a, a better result that way. So it's definitely opened my eyes more to collaboration. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing. You always yeah. learn something from somebody else and plus it's just more fun. Yeah, exactly. Cool, cool. So have you actually met anyone like in real life, any other brick foamers? No, close, close enough. Um, there's a guy... Uh, who lives where I'm living right now in Stratford. Uh, his name's Dylan Woodley. Oh. And he, he's made some amazing videos. And he's he's a bit younger than me, and we never actually met, but he's from this town, and so that's kind of a, a really cool okay. connection. Yeah, but, Dylan's uh, really talented. Yeah, his Houdini video is one of my top mm-hmm, ones for mm-hmm. sure. It's it's incredible. Now, hopefully he's still making uh, brick films. I know he was doing some stuff for the Lego group a while back, but I haven't seen a lot of stuff from him, but he's... Yeah, I, I think I wouldn't speak for him, but I think he's he's probably making money off of it somehow for sure. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, he's, he's definitely one of our favorites, and definitely, uh, yeah. hopefully, maybe we'll get a chance to talk to him one day. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are the um, and then we'll kind of bounce around here. You've done a lot of sort of test things as of as of the last probably year or so. You mentioned your uh, Doctor Strange um, and a few other things. Uh, one of the things I noticed, uh, cause a lot of, uh, I think it was in the Lego pumpkin bot you did. Yeah. Um, you, you, I, I guess you're getting, uh, maybe you're getting your, um, your models, uh, for Mecha bricks or whatever, but the, even Lego's written on the stud now. I noticed on that one. Yeah. That's a Mecha bricks thing. They, they allow you to do that. It adds a bit of time to your, to your processing, but it, oh, it's, imagine, it's a yeah. huge, hugely beneficial picture or, um, feature. But, uh, the thing with me, like, like I said before, I'm I'm working on my laptop, and it's it's. I think I have a a GeForce 960, which isn't very good mm-hmm. as far as graphics. And so to render, you see these people on Instagram a lot posting digital renders, but they look real, or you know, just like the the Lego Movie did, mm-hmm. how they get the scratches and everything, and the lighting's perfect. And to be honest, that uh, like to to render one frame like that for me can sometimes take two days one frame wow so, wow so the quality of my renders don't look quite as good as some of those uh which i'm fine with but but ideally you know you have a huge processor that can get those uh what's the image or what's the word photorealistic look mm-hmm. so mine look a bit bit uh you know downgraded from that but uh at least i get to keep putting stuff out there but yeah eventually I, i'd like a computer that can handle that look so so that they look like it's real Lego. Do you find uh, doing your uh, CGI over like a wide expanse, like on some of uh, some of the ones you've done uh, in front of a wide expanse, uh, easier to do? Uh, how do you mean wide expanse? Uh, well, you just have a white background. Um, oh, I see. Oh, oh, I see. The white. It's like your that's, your that's... mech fight and stuff like that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, that's way easier for sure um, because you're minimalizing. Uh, render time and and it's just an easy way to get good lighting it's called a, a dome, light. dome light so it just it just kind of captures the whole thing rather than setting up lights here and here and here and trying to get a good shadow and stuff it's just kind of it's a one click render basically yeah i'm i'm horrible at lighting on a blender and i've done a few things after we uh uh did the podcast with christopher i did a a, a little uh, clear transparent lego drop uh, where you know, I was using, I think, two or three of his products um, to uh-huh. make that happen, like two. Um, and it was probably a two-second video, and I, I think it took two days to uh, render. Yeah, for sure. It's like 30 frames, but yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It was crazy. Yeah, rendering is, is a huge problem, and uh, because we're on these remote uh, workstations for school, what they have there is a, it's called a render farm, mm. and so it, it uses every computer that's turned on but not logged into to, to help render mm-hmm. so some of these renders can go 
crazy fast, which is important for the work we're doing. But because we're now on remote computers, it doesn't work. So a lot of us who had big, big uh, lighting plans for our final films for, you know, to graduate are having to cut back a bit because the render times, I think I had a, a 600 frame thing I was trying to render at home and it took like days oh, and, wow. and, and then, and then there were corrections on it. So I have to do it again. Oh. So I'm going to, I'm going to simplify my lighting a bit, but uh, rendering is a huge uh, problem with the CG world for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, is um, that uh, Lego T-Rex you made? Um, it's only yeah. a few seconds, but wow, that is just, it's, it's gorgeous. Oh, thanks. See, again, that, that's, that's a, a huge render and I had big plans to do like the whole sequence, but mm -hmm. it ended up just being that 13 second thing. Cause, cause it was taking forever. Mm. But well, I, I enjoyed doing it. it. It was, it was, it was cool. Like when that set came out, I was like, I got to do this. Yeah. Uh, another thing I noticed, uh, was really cool. It's that you really, uh, captured the dynamics of fluid movement in your Lego mech fight. One of them, cause you, uh, I guess evidently, uh, you, you shot yourself beforehand of you, uh, doing the movement in front of a camera and you mimic those movements in as the mech doing it. Yeah, you gotta and have reference. <laughs> That's what we're learning. That uh, was a beautiful reference, though. Yeah, it was really it, neat it, to see know, that. Sometimes, oh, thanks. you know, you do an animation, it just doesn't have a, a real feel to it, whether it's stop motion or uh, a CGI. And when I saw that the first time, I was like, wow, that just it feels real. And another thing I noticed is it seemed like you're, uh, I don't know, you were applying, uh, I guess, a different filter or whatever on your your uh, your your uh, models to where they yeah. seemed shinier. They seemed like they more more reflective, like real Lego bricks, like as if you were using, I know you weren't using it, but like uh, um, Christopher's um, uh, ABS plastics uh, add-on for Blender. Exactly. exactly. Uh, so the, the, that's a, it's a renderer that I paid for that I shilled out. I think it's 500 bucks for a, for a membership, but it's called Redshift and it's the first, uh, renderer that uses the GPU. So like I was saying, the G the GeForce 960. So if you had a better a better uh, graphics card, you could render something like that in seconds. Whereas you know those took me days, but it's still it's still faster to get that result using a CPU renderer would take I don't know a year maybe. Like it, it's wow. it's crazy how good this renderer is. Even though it still takes me days, it looks amazing. The the reason those are on white backgrounds is because any um, because the mecha bricks, they're they're truly modeled bricks. So every brick has every detail, every you know, all of the bricks are there. So it, it's a huge processing thing. That's why you see, like in the in the video games, a lot of people give the video games grief because they make models of the finished model. They don't actually build the models out of Lego in the games. Um, but that's clearly to save. GPU because it, it is it is time consuming, um, but that that was those were ones that I was like yeah we got to go for the big render here because it, it's worth it. Um, but back to reference like like I said earlier like I used to do a lot of recreations of movie scenes because I had that reference and those are some of my best work because I was following a reference trying to trying to animate without a reference is like I don't know especially without any kind of onion skinny or anything like. I don't know. Good luck. <laughs> and so, you, so especially now that I'm uh, going to school, it, they drill every day. They're like, you got to have good reference. You got to have good reference. And so if anyone's listening, get good reference, even if okay. it's you. And even if it's Lego people, like, you know, you can still adapt your movement to a Lego person and uh, your animation will just skyrocket to better, better heights that way. Of course, um, you probably know how to make better reference because you know how to, uh, I'm assuming you, quite adept at dancing yeah uh, <laughs> I, I definitely uh definitely can move and i definitely uh understand you know acting and stuff so it is it is becoming clear to me that that is going to be a huge asset going forward yeah 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 very cool uh, we'll uh we'll, about... we'll, we'll kind of go into some fun subjects uh, as we uh uh close down here um some of some things you did uh you made a, a really cute I guess it, you could call it stop motion, but I don't think you used stop motion as a technique. It was called the fight you made with your wife. 
Oh yeah. That was, uh, a, it was, it was, it was really so cool. adorable so and cool. funny and yeah, it was really cool to see. How did yeah, you how did you I'm shoot that? About ten years ago we made that. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you just, just shoot video and then just take frames out of it or So yeah, exactly. So you just you just kind of there's a it's completely ripped off. Not the not the actual movie, but like the technique is ripped off from this great oh boy. I don't even remember what it's called, but there's a it's like a classic animation that was, you know, viral before viral was the thing of like these two guys fighting. And yeah, we, we, we just love that video so much that we tried to recreate it. So for the flying, like you just jump mm-hmm. and then move forward and jump again. And you only, you only take the jump frame. So yeah. it, it's very time consuming to cut out each frame that you need, but imagine. the result's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah, was, that was awesome. That was cute. That was cute. Your uh, your cornfield video was kind of interesting as well too. Looks like you guys had a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> yeah, was, I don't know. That's what that was kind of uh, before I knew that you were supposed to kind of cater your YouTube to uh, to what you wanted to uh, show, and so that's one of the videos that snuck on there. <laughs> any yeah. any fun behind the scenes there? <laughs> you didn't get oh, lost no, out there. Yeah, you didn't get, did you get I think lost? We had a barbecue, and we just started running in the cornfield, and what and I, I like the I think. Uh, I think the horror aspect is kind of fun. So when you came out of the cornfield, was there like a um, a baseball field out set up? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just it was just this backyard at a farm. I think oh. we were we were just having having a good time. Probably drinks okay. were involved, maybe. Uh, it's funny because it looked. I mean, it looked just like you know the field yeah, of dreams yeah. when you guys were walking. It's like wow, that's like exactly where they were in the movie. <laughs> That guy, the guy in the video, his name is Matt or Matt. He's a good friend of mine. We we went through college together and we've worked professionally together. And he's a voice. He's a voice on the Affel one. He's the other voice on that. He's he's been a voice for me a few times. Awesome. I think in uh, World War II he yells medic or something. Like medic. he's he's been he's been there since the beginning. Cool, cool. I take a. Uh, have you been able to do any uh, live music and bands? Any? I know you had a couple of uh, videos on one from I think the Oftens and another from the Crickets, I believe. Yeah, the crickets was so. There's two videos from that time. There's uh, the Lego Buddy Holly, mm-hmm. and there's uh, it's called Ravens in the Sky, Regina song, which is where we we did the show. So we moved to Regina, and we did the production of Buddy Holly. And so the guys in the band, uh, you know, we are all musicians, so we actually played every night. And so we we ended up writing this song. It was actually I think that our director made us do it as a bonding exercise, and he said, "You guys have one hour, come up with a song." And so since we were in Regina, Saskatchewan, we wrote a song about Regina. And uh, since then, unfortunately, the bass player lives in Edmonton, Alberta, mm-hmm. and but the rest of us live in Ontario. So since then, we've 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 come together and made made music since. Um, but yeah, I, we wrote that song and recorded it, and then I kept saying, "I'm going to make a music video. I'm going to make a music video." And then about, I guess uh, a year a year later, I finally came out with that 2D uh, After Effects movie. Yeah, that was excellent, cute. Excellent. Excellent. Um, got anything else? No, I mean, I can't believe, I mean, we've already been here for like two hours and I wasn't, really? <laughs> didn't think it was, it was really kind of flown by. Oh, time flies. Yeah. Oh, cheers. Yeah, yeah that, that was fun. I, I, I love talking about it. I never really talk about it. It's kind of this, uh, not dark secret or anything, but it's kind of just something I don't like to talk about because most of my friends don't understand it. So it's cool yeah. to finally talk about it. It's, yeah, it's no, it's fun awesome. to talk and art. There's been a lot of, uh, great tips and uh, behind the scenes and really good information for people so we appreciate you sharing all of your you know background and helping everybody out oh well, no problem if you if anyone out there has a question or or uh, wants to collaborate let me know because i i love to uh, to talk this stuff cool, cool and i guess if uh wouldn't mind adding you to our uh, voice actor list because wow you'd be like the perfect voice Oh sure. I didn't realize how. Might have union fees to pay though. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no no no. I believe them. <laughs> no, I mean wow, you're you're super talented, you and your wife both. So uh, yeah, we're just thrilled to to know mal- know more about you, and uh, yeah, I'd love to use your voice though. So. Oh great! Well yeah, you guys too. You guys, what you guys are doing for this uh, community is so impressive. So I'm 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 happy to be here. I'm proud to be here because you've you've had a lot of big names in the in the industry. Uh, on there so i'm happy to be here oh, happy you were here yeah thank you thanks we really appreciate it and if you ever find yourself in atlanta let us know oh, and oh i'll i'll let you know up. for sure cool beans of course you know after we met adam we had to get the men in black to come and erase his memory of what we look like but you know <laughs> they're really nice guys so <laughs> secret safe with me all right cool, cool. that works 
All right. Well, uh, you and your family continue to stay self safe and healthy through this. It's a really scary time. It's it really it's is surreal. Yeah. I mean, it. You know, we're just in our house. So I mean, other than seeing social media and the and the news, it almost still doesn't seem real because we're not actually going out into it. But you know, you hear it and you're just like, "What well, this this really is real." No, it really is, and and I, I actually said that a few times. Is I wish it, I almost wish it was a zombie apocalypse because then you'd see them running around. You know what I mean? And there'd be something out there that you had to hide from. But it's this it's this mystery, who knows where it is virus that you know you might not see in your neighborhood ever, or you might get a bunch of cases. Like it's this scary thing that, and I think that's the uh, the biggest fear is the unknown of it. So. I, I, I keep saying, I wish it was just zombies because yeah. then you could then yeah. you knew what you were dealing with. You know? See what you're fighting, but yeah. exactly. <clears throat> I, I, I think because it doesn't seem so real, it's people are not taking it serious, and that's why it just continues to spread the way it is. Absolutely, um, yeah. Yeah, governor's just like, school is now, we, we figured it would be, but for the kids, it's shut down now for the rest of the year, so they won't go back into school again until the next school year, and I'm, I don't know, not even sure about that, but... No, it's wild, and, and uh, homeschooling is so tricky, like, let alone teaching your, your own kid, but but me trying to get my schooling done well, having a kid, and, and yeah. my wife's so great, you know, she's she's taking the brunt of that work, but uh, but it's challenging to, to split your focus that way, so a lot of people are going to have to change the way things are, but uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll stay safe and get through it soon. Yep, yeah. Definitely. All right, well, stay in touch, and uh, we'll make sure everybody has all the links to all of your amazing work, and you definitely betcha. Instagram, too, so uh, definitely want to check that out. And cool. continued uh, success to you. Can't wait to see everything you do. Yeah, once I'm out of school, I'll, I'll, I'll have more free time to post some stuff, so maybe I'll get some uh, some things going on. Sounds Excellent. great. Excellent. And, and, uh, and I should plug, uh, I, told, I, 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 I told Adam and, uh, and Christopher that we would... Uh, that I would plug that we're that something is coming soon. I can't say much, but it, there will be more from us. So that Yay. warms our hearts. That's exciting. Yeah. Totally. Well, we awesome. love all you guys. So yeah, and we and you're also talented. So anything you do, we know is going to be amazing. So thumbs up. Lucky all right. us. Cool. All right, you and your family take care. Thanks again for joining us. No, no, my pleasure. See you later. All right, all right. bye, Galen. Bye. Thanks so much to Galen for spending so much time with us, and thanks to everyone who stuck with us through this entire podcast. Please check out our sponsors and partners on the Brick Filmers Guild homepage. And don't forget to check out Galen's amazing work on his YouTube, Instagram, and other social media platforms. His links will be written in the description under the video and on the podcast blog. We want to give a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. Spug is Stew, Frame 5 Studios, Mind Game Studios, Dark Dragon Films, Forest Fire 101, Spencer Katz, Paganimation, and William Osborne. You guys really inspire us to keep creating more of these in-depth conversations with the world's great brick filmers. If you would like to sponsor one of our podcasts, please contact me through one of our social media sites. The sponsors we have are always brick film related and are products that we use ourselves and highly recommend. We would like to thank Kevin McLeod for his wonderful music, which we use for our podcasts and in our brick films. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or YouTube, please like or rate, comment, and share on your social media. We'd really appreciate that. So, until next time, bye, y'all.